stopped by the cops coming down the, the motorway, but I wasn't, so there you are. We'll give it a minute or two and then we'll start. Thank you. Call to order. Thank you very much indeed. Um, item one on the agenda. Any apologies? Oh, David's online, right? Okay. Councillor McLaughlin. Uh, Councillor McLaughlin is an apology. Hmm? I don't think he's joined us. No. He may join us, right? He may join us. Okay. Councillor Mahan, could you turn your screen on, please? Yeah, great, David, thanks. Thank you, Chair. Yep, yep, I can see you. Is that a cheap Land Rover you got? Right, uh, item two, minutes. I've signed um, the, those minutes, they're signed. Uh, item three, any declarations of interest? Do you have any, David? No. I don't think so, Chair, no. That's okay. And nobody in the chamber. Right, thank you. Councillor Rennie, do you have, Alan, where are you? Yep. That's right, Chairman. Uh, item number four. Uh, LA 10, 2023, 2108. Is there an interest? From okay. So noted. Thanks very much indeed. And when it comes up, you'll withdraw out of the chamber then. We'll call you back, okay? I didn't intend to withdraw from the chamber this time. But better, I think, if you do withdraw. If you don't mind. I think I'm going to stay. Well, put your head muffs on then, basically. Yeah. Okay. Um, we'll go into item four then. We have five files called in for decision. The first one is LA10, bar 2023-2009. And I'm going to hand over to the new Darren, Seamus. Hold on. Yep, there you are. No, you're not. Hold on. There you are now. Members, while we're waiting, I, I believe some of the presentation slides were loaded up to decision time. If you want to actually do it in your own computer, I think everybody is aware of that, aren't they? They are, yeah. That's okay. Sorry, Seamus. Away you go. It's okay. Okay. Good afternoon, members. So the first application is uh, LA 10 2023 2009F, and it's for replacement dwelling uh, immediately west of 27 Shan Muller Road, Oma. The applicant's Kay Phelan. 
and the recommendation of Seamus, could you drop the mic and maybe lean into the mic? Okay, yeah. Not that I'm saying we're hard of hearing. I'm okay, but it's still maybe... That's all right. I wasn't going to point the finger at you, Thomas, Councillor O'Reilly, but if you want to hold your hand up, that's okay. It's an age thing, so uh, lean in as well. If you... No problem. So the recommendation is to refuse uh, plan information. So uh, the first slide there shows the site in red along the road. Uh, and to the rear, the site also includes the replacement dwelling, uh, shaded in brown, if you can see it there. Uh, that's a better uh, indication of what we're looking at here. So the proposed outline of the, or the outline of the proposed dwelling is shown there to the bottom of the screen, while the dwelling to be replaced is shown in brown towards the top of the screen. Uh, there's a photograph of the old building. Uh, officers are content that it is a dwelling and was a dwelling. Uh, walls intact, roof intact, as you can see. Oh, I've gone too far. Uh, full application, so we have elevations and floor plans of the proposed dwelling uh, to be cited uh, on the site shown. So the approximate position of the dwelling is located or indicated here on an aerial uh, imagery. Uh, the new house shown as the blue rectangle, while the dwelling to be replaced is, is circled in red uh, of note and uh, of considerable uh, importance to the application are the dwellings either side of the site. So we have indicated here, and th this is the issue with the application and what the refusal is based on. The proposal, as I said, is to site the dwelling off-site uh, as indicated by the red rectangle within the red box. Uh, number 27 sits adjacent the dwelling to be replaced sits to the rear of that. And further to the west, there's another dwelling and garage. Now, the issue here is the extent of the gap between where the dwelling is proposed to be sited and the existing dwelling to the west would uh, create the opportunity for two further sites and would essentially lead to the creation of uh, ribbon development. That's it shown again then on the aerial imagery. Uh, the approximate position of the new dwelling clearly indicated uh, by the blue rectangle, while the two yellow rectangles show what could be uh, two sites, two further sites. Um, if the dwelling to proposed were to be built and constructed on the site, the two rectangles would qualify if applied for as two infill dwellings. So we have uh, street view images here looking up towards the site. So the site is just in the next field beyond the blue bin. Number 27 is as shown. This is looking in the other direction down the road towards the site. Uh, the site's uh, down beyond the field on the left, uh, sitting in the corner. There's a view of the site. The dwelling to be replaced sits into the rear of the hedge. Uh, you can see the, the higher trees there, straight in the center of the image. That's where the replacement dwelling is. Now, we raised issue with the agent on the proposal and advised that uh, it was, as officers believed, contrary to policy by reason of the creation of ribbon development and the creation of the two infill sites uh, previously mentioned. The yellow star was indicated as a, an option, uh, albeit outside the red outline of the application site. It was or is on land identified in blue, uh, owned by the applicant. So it was considered by officers as a suitable site that would meet all other criteria and uh, potentially meet the needs of the applicant. This, however, was declined and the, the agent requested that we proceed with the proposal as shown. So for the reasons listed within the report uh, and the LDP regulations, when reading both those together, uh, it is considered that the application should, and that's incorrect, should be refused as is contrary to the LDP. It is uh, the reason being that if approved, the proposal would alter rural character by reason of build-up development and the creation of ribbon development. Okay, members, you've had Seamus outline the reasons why the recommendation is to refuse. Have you any queries or questions? 
Councillor McCann, first of all, Stephen. Please. Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, I note that the agent or applicant hasn't requested speaking rights. Has there been any correspondence from the agent or applicant at all in relation to this? Yes, uh, Councillor. We, as I uh, said there, we went to them and uh, to explore the opportunity that we had identified uh, for the off-site replacement, but not on this site into the rear. Um, the agent came back to us and said that that was not... He initially said, yeah, he'd go and speak to his client about it. He did so, came back and said no, that his client wasn't happy with that and wanted to proceed on the basis of the proposal as indicated. Okay. And in terms of from the agenda was published, you know, has there been any indication why the agent or applicant might have requested speaking rights? Has there been any correspondence with your nothing has, nothing has come forward as far as we're aware, no. Okay. Thanks very much, Stephen. Uh, I've got Councillor Thompson, Earl. Thank you very much, Chair. Thanks, Seamus, for the report thus far. Uh, you mentioned there, Seamus, that the, the Yellow Star were the alternative site, and you said this was declined by the applicant and the agent. Can you give us any more information as to what their thoughts were for declining it? There was no real information provided, Councillor. They weren't happy with that option, and they didn't indicate specific reasons as to why it didn't meet their needs. But um, it's not, you know, from officer's point of view, it's not that we're expecting them to go on to a confined site or a, a site that would, for all purposes, maybe not be developable. It's a green field, as is this site. So in the absence of uh, hard reasons presented by the applicant or agent, I, I, I can't guess what the reason would be. Uh, the access, as you can see on that, on that screenshot there, is shown to go to, to, to meet on to the existing access. So that too would be expected on this. But again, as I said, the the application proposed access and onto the existing lane. So again, I can't imagine that that would be uh, a deciding factor. Okay, Seamus, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Mr. McCann, Stephen, you want to come back? I was broadly, uh, yeah, I think you answered the question, Seamus. I was just going to come in and say, uh, or ask, uh, the site that has, that's been applied for, you know, is potentially creating two other infill opportunities. So it's hard to see how that wouldn't be the case if the site was to be granted and proceed with the yellow star. You know, if you try to imagine a, a block plan or a, a site plan on that particular location, you know, does the same does the same sort of opportunity not arise? The, sorry, you, yeah, 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 sorry, yeah, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, the difference, councillor, that that the officers see here is that uh, the gap uh, that would be remaining, or the gap then in the frontage field, would be large enough. It would be too large for just two dwellings. It would be uh, it couldn't contain two dwellings of similar scale, size, layout to those around it. So it it would fail in that regard. Um, so the, the, to sight in at the rear, it wouldn't impact on that frontage and it wouldn't hold the frontage to the road. It would be set beside a, quite a mature hedge, as you can see. So um, it wouldn't have that impact. It wouldn't be uh, in line to create uh, infill opportunities or contribute to the frontage development. Okay, thank you. I have just one question from the chair. I mean, this is probably the first of a certain number going to come through under this new policy. The existing dwelling that exhibits the um, characteristics of a dwelling or the existing structure, where the proposal is not to demolish and build on the same footprint, uh, as in this case, it will there be a condition, should a similar uh, application go through for approval, that the dwelling that is being used for replacement is to be conditioned to be demolished and removed? Is that in in some cases the uh, the application would specify that the the old dwelling is to be retained as ancillary uh, to but the not the domestic uh, accommodation. But, it's just, it, it can be it, used for an ancillary use. In those in those circumstances, there'd be a condition applied to state that it should not it should no longer be used for human habitation. Right, that's okay. Right, that answers my query. Any other queries? Right, members, we come to decision time. Uh, Seamus has said that the officer's recommendation is for refusal for the reasons outlined um, as shown. And I think he has answered the question with regard to the starred possible alternative. 
um, in regard to would it or would it not create additional opportunities for housing? And he says it wouldn't because the gap is too wide in the officer's opinion for two dwellings of similar scale and size to those in the surrounding countryside. So I'm waiting for a proposal. Thank you. Councillor O'Reilly, Tom. Chair, in light of uh, what has been uh, relayed to us, uh, I'm happy enough to go with the uh, uh, recommendation. Officer's recommendation refused. Thank you. Um, the, I have Councillor McGuire, Tommy. Uh, thanks, Chair. And again, in line with our uh, uh, policies, and uh, I think consistently we have taken this position on similar sites. So I'm uh, happy to second the recommendation, Chair. Gormagher. Thank you very much indeed. Any further recommendations? Oh, Councillor McCann, Stephen. Thank you, Chair. It's just really a comment, I suppose. I think that this committee could have really done with the benefit of hearing from the agent and the applicant. Uh, they may well have been extenuating circumstances way that Yellow Star uh, said that was, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, suitable. So I think, you know, uh, in light of no agent being here, there's not much else we can do, only go with the recommendation. But I do think it's unfortunate that, that we haven't heard from them. Yeah, I think probably on a side comment before I move on, we're slightly changing our sort of approach and interaction, that's our officers, with regard to agents and applicants, and we'll be rolling those amended protocols out. And one of the issues is that we'll be offering um, enhanced pads, pre-application discussion. This is probably um, an opportune one to actually highlight that discussions prior to formal application could have actually possibly uh, highlighted issues, resolved them and carried them through. So I would put it out to agents and any applicants listening that that facility will be rolled out in the future and it should enhance hopefully the service available, but also highlight and help in the process of application and try and get applications that are policy compliant. Thanks, uh, Councillor Campbell. Len. Chairman, did you say that enhanced pads? I mean, it's yep. something- We've had a couple of workshops, Glenn. I don't think you were, were there for I them. Um, rather than go through this medium, yeah. I can get Paul after the committee meeting to, to run you over it very quickly. Well, just it's as just... a general comment, you know, yep. anything that can encourage pre-application discussions is certainly something I'd be very supportive of. Yeah, well, that, that's what we see, I think, as committee members and uh, definitely officers. And we're trying to streamline the resource to put to that so that the experience for both applicants as well as agents is enhanced and actually we can deliver sort of a better success rate. Yeah. So look, I have a proposal and that's from Councillor O'Reilly, duly seconded by Councillor Maguire, and that's to go with the officer's recommendation to refuse. All agreed? Agreed, that's unanimous. Seamus, do you want to round up? Okay, members, so uh, planning reference LA 10, 2023, 2009F. Uh, members, the recommendation was to refuse plan information for the reasons within the report and subject to the reason presented. Members have agreed with this recommendation and plan information is to be refused. Thanks very much, Seamus. We'll move on now to application number two, and that's LA 10 bar 2022 bar 0833. And this is a proposed replacement dwelling and garage. Seamus? Yeah, so again, members, uh, the reference number LA 10 2022 for replacement dwelling and garage at 90 metres east of 49 Glen Road, Drumquin. The applicant is A. McEnroe, and the recommendation of officers is to refuse planning permission. So, on the slide in front of you, you can see the application site as presented, outlined in red, uh, other land owned, outlined in blue, while the building to be replaced is shown in green to the west of the application site. So it's better annotated here on this slide or in this aerial imagery. Um, the site, again, is indicated by the, the red rectangle, while the replacement building is indicated by the red outline to the west or to the left. So the photos show the application site. Um, it shows the wider field, but the, the bulk of the site is contained within the, the slide or the image to the right to your right. Um, which is the agricultural field. 
The building to be replaced is indicated on these uh, photos, um, the front and rear elevations of this building. These are internal pictures showing the, the gables of the, well, showing the inside of the building uh, with particular reference to the gables. You can see on one gable to your left, there's a, a high level window, while on the other, you can see the, the door, what would have been previously referred to as a barn loft. Um, you can see it there on the left picture again. Um, so that's the internals of that door in front of you on the, the right hand side picture. Uh, Officers have recommended refusal, and there's two parts to the refusal. Um, one of those being that um, the building to be replaced is not considered to be a, a dwelling, but that it also would be suitable for conversion or reuse, as it's a locally important or a vernacular, in this case, vernacular building. And that's a, an, an extract or a snip of the policy in regards to that. So, for the reasons listed, um, just get to. The reason, their refusal reason, I'll go over that, is that the proposal is contrary to strategic policy SP01, furthering sustainable development and policy DE03, sustaining rural communities, and policy HOU08, rural replacement dwellings, as the building to be replaced does not exhibit the essential characteristics of a dwelling. The site proposed is not within the curtilage of an original dwelling, and the existing building, as I've alluded to, is suitable for conversion under HEO8 and uh, policy HOU08 rules out such buildings. Now I'll go back, if you bear with me. Our belief that this, or officers believe that this is not a dwelling is based on the internals of the, of the building. And you can see on the picture on your right, what uh, those in, in the rural community would have referred to as stalls or stands, um, where cattle were tied for milking or other purposes. The barn lap door, which I referred to, the high level window, and I suppose more importantly, the fact that there's an absence of any internal chimney breast, any external chimney, any fireplace, anything that you would associate with uh, a dwelling. And I suppose it's difficult to argue that um, the building has been reconfigured to, to remove these when you can see that the original stone fabric of the building is there and evident. Me. Can you finish, James? Um, I believe the speaking rights on this. Could you throw up the, the normal agenda? Because I think I've got the agent to speak and Councillor McIlduff, in, I think, in support of the applicant. Doesn't show that. Well, the agenda's at the end. There's a few slides that the uh... Yeah, there the we agent has requested yep, that's to be okay. shown so we can get to them. Um, David, David McKinley, are you online, David? I am, yes. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can even see you, which is, could be good or it could be bad. It might be bad. You, I'm going to knock that off because I'm a bit nervous. Right, that's all right. Don't you worry. Uh, we yeah. know each other long enough, basically. Mm -hmm. No, I need to see you, David. Don't knock that television. Well, don't knock it off. The screen sure. off. No, okay. put, it, put it back on. Right. Yep. David, do you know the um, the process? You have, you have 10 yep. minutes. I think you're just speaking. The, the applicant isn't speaking. It's just you, yourself. Just myself. That's so, right, yeah. Um, I've got 10 minutes. Hopefully, you'll not need that. And then if we have any questions, we'll ask you questions. You know the drill, basically. And then it's it's on to hear from Councillor McIntosh. So uh, are you good to go? Good to go, yeah. Right away you go. Thank you. Uh, Seamus, if you could go back one or two slides, please. Uh, the ones that I submitted this morning. Uh, possible. In particular, the aerial view. Uh, I'll, I'll make a, I'll make a start and we'll come to you. Thank the planning committee for allowing me to speak on behalf of our applicant, Amy McEnroe. Amy is a helper on her father's farm. She recently has had a baby and is living in Castle Dairy and a rented house with her partner. The position of this dwelling located at her father's farm will greatly ease the travelling and mum. Hold, hold, hold on, David. Hold on. Hold on, David. I think you're, you're, you're muffled really in the speech. Could you sort of lean in a bit more? What about that? Is that any better? Yeah. A wee bit, yeah. Just stay in close there. Stay in close, fair enough. Uh, we'll go back to the start. Amy, Amy's a helper on her father's farm. She recently has had a baby and is living in Castle Derrick in a rented house with her partner. 
The position of this dwelling located at the father's farm, father's farm will greatly ease the, the traveling and her mum is also there to help look after the baby. I've read the report generally, uh, the planner's report, generally the new site is acceptable. Uh, there was one objection to the waterways at the back and, and that'll be a condition in planning and relating to an OSEMP, uh, basically during construction of the dwelling and when completed, no dirt, etc. will be allowed into the stream. That will be a condition if approval is granted. Roads are, ha roads are also happy. The application has been refused under two distinct policies, HOU8 and HOE8 for the, from the new local development plan. Uh, this application was submitted under PPS21 and has slid into the new development plan. Uh, our response was limited as we and you are still learning the new policies. Uh, the site is acceptable if common sense is used in the three, the three times I spoke with the planner, we discussed the points we're, we're now about to discuss. Uh, there was an alternative site proposed, and unfortunately, it was, it was through the farm and way up through the up, up, up a further field or two away. It's so unmortgageable, uh, and it's it's not it's not even open to discussion as far as the clients concerned or I. Does the building exhibit the characteristics of a dwelling? Uh, Seamus, uh, can you go inside the uh, can you go inside the building once I center a wee second? Um, we 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 have attached photographs and get an extent of the building. We can agree that the building is of a two story. Our story of the quarter height. It, it has several windows to the front elevation, and and fronts onto the farm lane or farm yard. The building has two very strong gables and well built. Even the window openings are well prepared, leading me to believe that the quality of stone and the way it was built would more than definitively lean towards a dwelling, uh, not not an outbuilding. You can see the pockets in the walls where the floor joists sat. Uh, just that image you have there, you can see the pockets in the wall where the first floor joist sat for the first floor. Granted, the internal ground floor has lost its operational functions as, as a dwelling, a chimney and internal walls. Uh, there's canny resemblances to a, to a dwelling. Uh, if you recall the discussions within committee meetings we had before and the requirement of a chimney, look, this building was probably had by a pot bellied stove, so there's no, there's no chimney to definitively define it to a dwelling. Um, Furthermore, I believe the barn steps, uh, if you go into that other slide, if you look at that other slide, was put on at a later date as a keen eye can pick up the different stone patterns, uh, different stone patterns between the steps and the building. I, I firmly believe that this was a dwelling. The site is not within the cartilage of the existing dwelling. Seamus, if you go back to the overview with the, the circles on it, please. Refer, refer to the aerial view and the circles we've highlighted. The yellow rings are the existing work and farmyard. The planners, and they're all buildings occupied by animals uh, and bits of machinery. The planners would have seen it when visiting the site. You can see the red highlighted area. That's actually the building in there, Seamus. Your your slide uh, showed the, the uh, as outlined in red, was the building behind, and I'll come to that. That's what we have now outlined in green as the open silo. Uh, we are placing to the rear, if it's outlined in green, it's still a working open on race silo, which is used periodically. That's along the back wall of the house. The, the lane way into the farmyard is between our red building and the yellow building. This is a working farmyard. We have conditions, we have conditions from the environmental health department that a new dwelling and an applicant is not if not associated with the farm business, should be more than 75 meters away from the farm buildings for noise and smell. So therefore we have a conflict. Yes, the daughter helps out from time to time, but the partner doesn't. So therefore we require to be more than 75 meters away from a farmyard. This also is issues obtaining a mortgage. We would also ask we would provide, sorry, we would also ask where you would provide a private amenity space for this dwelling. We have no rear garden as the rear garden is the open silo. The front street is shared with the operating farmyard and amenity to this dwelling cannot be provided next to the dwell, next to the building. To ask for it to be lo located away from the dwelling is unreasonable. So as you look at that, the building is completely surrounded by by uh, by 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 working a working farm, either silos or machinery sheds or or, or, or animals. Uh, I think in this case we've demonstrated where the building should be relocated. HE08 relies to the we've discussed at length locations of the dwelling within a working farmyard. Th this policy relates to an isolated, as I see it, to an isolated barn away from any farm groupings. In this case, it doesn't, it's bang in the middle of a working farmyard. Therefore, whether the building is indeed fit for conversion, the location of the dwelling within the farmyard environment is far from acceptable. Therefore, the, this policy HE08 is irrelevant. Uh, in relation to uh, in relation to HOA, this policy is criteria for certain sites, but not all. 
uh, HEO8 uh, has to do with the refurbishing of old buildings. It's, 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 it's the criteria is there for certain sites, but not for all. This case, I believe, is an exception. From what was discussed and pointed out, I believe this application has significant merits and would ask that the decision to refuse be overturned to an approval. Uh, the uh, the outline in blue is where the proposed site is, which is at the second entrance into the farm. The farm, the farm actually, that would be the drive to the dwelling. Uh, the second entrance is between the yellow and the the red building, which is the the lane we in, which dissects the the building away from the farmyard. I'm I'm sort of finished here now. Uh, Robert, that's me. Uh, don't apologise, David. I'm always helpful. It's always helpful to us if somebody finishes early, so that's okay. Just hold on. I'm going to throw Perfect. the floor open to councillors to see if they want to ask you any questions. Councillors? Councillor Campbell, Glenn? Yes, Chairman. Um, I suppose I want to ask the agent. Um, the building's clearly, you know, it's a building of, of some age, uh, but it's clearly well constructed. And, and what remains of the building seems to be, uh, to my eye, quite, you know, solid. Has any attempt been made to try and identify um, who would have historically, you know, if it was lived in, um, resided in the property? Because I know we have had cases where buildings were much worse and weren't appearing on ordinance surveys, etc. But we were able to identify through local knowledge, you know, an occupant of the building, just to check if there was any effort made there, Chair. I um, I, I did, uh, uh, Councillor Campbell, I did check ordinance survey and it's, uh, ordinance survey history maps through OSNA are quite limited. There's, there's periods of gaps within them and I can, I can see the building. I think on the corner of that building, there's a, there's an 1863 carved into one of the coin stones. Uh, that's as much as I know. The building has appeared in around about 18, 1870s maps, I think, along with uh, along with a, another building with a top right yellow circle is just above the dwelling. Um, I can't be sure what was the dwelling and what wasn't, but but what I can be sure is if, if you look at the coins in that building and you look at the way that building was built, that, that wasn't an outbuilding, that, that wasn't a, a barn as such. That, that to me was a, a dwelling, the amount of effort that was put into it. Even the windows and the shapes of the windows and how tidy they were just leads me to believe, and the size of them for that matter, leads me to believe that that, 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 that was a dwelling. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Thanks very much indeed. Uh, any further questions for uh, David? No, you got away likely, David. Thank you very much indeed. You can turn your yes, screen on. Thank you. Councillor Michael Duff, Barry, are you? Yep. Ready to go. Turn your screen on, please. Yep, got you. Barry, you, you've done it before, but uh, I'll just tell you, you have five minutes. Present yep. your your supporting statement. There'll be no questions to you, so if you present, so are you good to go? Yep. Thanks very much, yep. uh, Chair. Where you, you go there? Aye. Um. Well, my starting point is that there's real housing need on the part of the applicant. And uh, David has outlined Amy's situation very well about living in rented accommodation in Castle Derg. Newborn baby helps the father's farm. And it strikes me that if this is approved, it'll provide a whole family support, you know, solution for a real housing need. So that'd be my starting point. And obviously I'm aware that there aren't very many opportunities. You know, there aren't very many possibilities. There aren't very many exceptions when it comes to the countryside. So um, I was curious then reading the file and familiarizing myself with the case, um, why a conversion here is the answer, you know, as opposed to a replacement. And I think David has addressed that well um, by talking about how close it is, how proximity to the working farm. And it's my understanding that the family would need some amenity, you know, um, that provides comfort, convenience, enjoyment, you know, from further home. Um, and then whether or not this uh, exhibits the characteristics of a dwelling, um, I was quite amazed, you know, um, at, at the structural integrity, the vernacular of this building. If I was driving past that building, 
And I do this often, you know, I say to myself, God, there's an ideal uh, site for replacement. And this would strike me as the case in this instance, you know. Um, look at the quality of the stone, the quality of the window openings, uh, even the steps, you know. Uh, it does, uh, for me, exhibit or uh, lean towards uh, the characteristics of a, of a dwelling, you know, historically. And uh, outside the floodplain, you know, other issues were raised, I think, uh, in, the, in the passage of time about whether or not the dwelling would impact on water courses or fish stocks. I don't think that's the case. I think that has been ruled out. So all in all, you know, I'm looking for rural housing solutions. And I think this is one for Amy and our partner and their child and the wider family needs. So I think I'll leave it at that, Chair. And thanks very much for listening to me, uh, Committee. So it was a pleasure to listen to you, Barry. Thanks very much, Roberto. Right, in, Robert? in small doses, but mind you. <laughs> okay, thanks very much. You finished well in time. Uh, right, members, it's two discussions. Have you any questions to put back to Seamus, please? Bernard, you need to turn your screen on. Yep. If you have a question, go ahead. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Seamus. No, Seamus, I was just wondering, had, um, had Amy got a herd number, or is she associated with the father's farm in any way? You know, I wonder, is that in the, in the record? Has she, has she got a, a herd number, or is she attached to the business of the farm? Thank you. I suppose that's uh, following on from the few representations we've had. That's one of the points that I'd like to have made is that um, this isn't a farm case that's before us. Um, we haven't been asked to explore that side of it, uh, the applications for a replacement dwelling. Um, and we have recommended for refusal for the, the reasons stated. Um, no information has been presented in that regard to answer your question, no. Thanks very much. Um, next one up, Councillor Thompson. Earl. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Seamus. Uh, just looking at page 21 of our pack, uh, I'm assuming on the, on the left hand picture or photograph, uh, is that down the bottom of it, the bottom right of the left hand picture, is, is that a pipe or what is that? Just for your own curiosity at this stage. Is that a pipe? Look, I, I think I know the picture you're talking about, and it looks like it's a draining pipe that's just been sat on top of the, the, the stands. And, and the, yeah. and, uh, I can see it. I can see it. Pipe and the other one. I was just uh, trying to confirm it. That get this to work. The same sure, thing. Maybe. No, I know better. Thank you. Are you are you happy enough with that? Uh, that's okay. Right, Councillor Feely, Anthony. Yeah, thank you, Chair, and thank you, Seamus, for that. And I must say, this is very useful way we understand that we can zoom in and look very closely at this and I'm I'm looking at the, the structure of the building and I, I'm not making any, any um, rulings on it here yet but it does look to be very much like a dwelling house to me in my eyes I see that there's even windowsills in it I just want to shame us like not many sheds or outbuildings in the country years ago would have even windowsills in them and the steps up the side of the door there like and the steel guard going across with the ceiling joists was going into the wall. Like people could, years and years ago, people would be living in houses and, and there would be cattle in as well in the bottom of it there. Like, so does that make any difference with the window sills in it there, Seamus? That's the one of the questions we never asking, you know. And it's, it's, it's good to have that we can look when it's so close. Thanks, Chair. Okay. I suppose for ourselves and assessing it against the policy, Councillor, um, we took the view that any essential characteristics, it wouldn't have been unheard of that, uh, in fact, barns were as, as well built as the dwelling, maybe even better kept. Um, there may have been more thought of the animals than the people in days gone by. But um, it wouldn't be unheard of that old barns had windowsills, um, glass in the windows, as we can see, um, the, the steps up to the hay and farther above, uh, as I say, referred to as the, the barn loft. Um, that would often have been the arrangement. Um, I still, our planners still, officers still see it as 
an outbuilding and, and not exhibiting the essential characteristics of a dwelling as required by policy? Thanks so much, members. I think the pertinent point here is the, um, the policies that this application has come under. I think uh, we just teased out from Seamus, it's not under um, farm replacement. Um, it's actually under the replacement dwelling. Um, and it's just one of the, the suite of policies that we have. Again, I, I would say from the chair, probably could have done with regard to having a pre-application discussion to actually explore all the possibilities in regard to this. Um, but it's why it's, it's good being wise after the event, unfortunately. Somebody's having feedback there. Right, okay. Right, Paul, go ahead. Okay, thanks, Chair. Uh, and members, I suppose just maybe they set out um, Nick Shimmis is in his presentation taking you through all the internal characteristics um, and all the characteristics that sort of demonstrate or, or, or in our opinion would appear to be um, demonstrating that it wasn't a dwelling. And I know that the agent within the speaking rights has said he believes that they be a dwelling, but he's had the opportunity to submit information or any evidence of previous uh, residential occupation at the site. Uh, and as far as I know, we don't have any of that. Um, that was an, an opportunity that was able, available to him. Um, but as I say, Seamus, Seamus has taken you through some of the internal characteristics there that will demonstrate why, why it isn't a, a dwelling. Thanks, Chair. Thanks very much. Um, if there are no further questions, then we're again at decision time. Um, the recommendation is to refuse under the policies that the application was made. So I will await your proposals. Thank you. Members, do you need any more information from Seamus? I understand you're considering, but any more information required? Okay, I'll take that as a no. Okay, Councillor Rainey, Alan. Chairman, I we passed the point of asking a question. No, no, I said if you want any further clarification to help you make a decision. No, go ahead. Get your question, Chair. What is the difference between this here and a barn renovation? What is the difference between this here and a barn rep, uh, renovation? Yeah. And I have the experience of, of a barn re renovation that has been stripped down to the bare wall like this here. But that, councillor, I suppose, in a way, forms the basis of our reason, our reason for refusal, and that we believe this would be eligible for conversion. What you're alluding to, a barn renovation, a conversion job, on their pol and there's a policy there for it, HEO8. -E um, the difficulty under this proposal is that the subject building hasn't been included within the red outline of the site. Now, again, as has been alluded to under other applications here, this is something that could have been discussed at a, a pre-application stage. Um, the agent could have been advised to include the building within the red outline of the site. There could have been options like that. It could have been explored. Um, the agent has mentioned the fact that there's a silo or a, what looks 
to be a disused silo to the rear of this. There's scope there to do something, and as some of the other members had mentioned, um, this is a building of significant character, and it would be preferable to see it retained, converted, and reused. So those options are available, not currently under this proposal, but it's certainly something that could be explored down the line, yes. If you want to call it that. Thanks, Seamus. Councillor O'Reilly, Tom. Chair, just in, in that vein of helping us make a decision. Okay, so that, that gives a rationale for the conversion idea. How do you sort of mitigate against then the lack of amenity space around it if you're, you know, you're not taking the disused silo into, into account there and that you're coming straight out onto a lane and so forth? Um, you know, yeah, and the fact that uh, if it's not for somebody, direct connection with the farm needs to be 75 metres away. Yes, I can. The, the, there's no doubt, Councillor, that, that that is an issue, and it's, it's, I suppose, if you want to call it, it can be an issue with proposals, or this isn't the proposal, but a proposal such as that, the location of these barns and, and outbuildings is very often along a lane, very often along a road within a working farm. So it's something, I suppose, for the agent and the applicant to, to explore. Um, it may be the case that there's no uh, exact solution that's going to suit everyone's needs, but at the end of the day, to, the policy is there to secure the retention and upkeep of buildings like this. So to remove them and say it elsewhere, it's, it's not really meeting the needs of the policy or the sustainability that the policy is underpinned by. So there's a difficulty and there's a, there's a, there's a conflict there within the policy, but Again, uh, it's something that could be explored and perhaps worked at um, with a, an acceptable design scheme. Thank you. Member, members, what I'm taking out of the discussion, particularly the, the answers that we're actually getting back from Seamus, is that there are opportunities that could be explored around this holding, but this application does not actually meet the policy criteria that has been put in under. Um, Again, a pre-application discussion with regard to ex exploring what the specific wishes of the applicant are and how they may best be um, achieved within the farm holding is uh, a basis for discussion and it, it really should have been discussed before the application was put in. And unfortunately, I think we've got to realise we have got to view each application within the context of its policy setting. And the policy setting, as Seamus has laid out, is this does not tick the boxes under the, the relevant policies. But that does not preclude, I think, further discussion with regard to trying to get a site that would be suitable, uh, hopefully mutually suitable, both to the um, applicant and with regard to the officers looking at policy compliance. But we have to look at this uh, the way it is. But I think we shouldn't look on this as closing the door to opportunities to the applicant. Um, Councillor Thompson, Earl. Yeah, th thanks, Chair. Thanks, Chair, Mr. Gain. Uh, it's a very difficult one. We could go around in circles here all day on it. But with regard to uh, further discussion, do, does this have to be does this have to be rejected at this stage and then further discussions can take place between the agent, the applicant and the planning officers? Could that take place? Uh, I think this basically, there's no scope within this application, the way it's actually been formed, to actually take further discussion. It's, it's sort of reasonably black and white. There are opportunities out there, I think Seamus is alluding to, but it would have to be the subject of a new application. And I think before a new application would come in, I think it would be advisable for the agent and the applicant basically to have a pre-application discussion with our officers, and then it can be framed the way it should be framed to actually become policy compliant. Well, in that case, Chairman, uh, I think we're, sorry, Chair, we're left in maybe no other alternative today uh, other than to go with our officer's recommendation. And then I'll make a further proposal that the, the discussions take place between the agent, the applicant, and our planning officers 
with, with regard to what we move this forward in the future. But today we have to go with the officer's recommendation. I think David online is probably now well aware of uh, what needs to take place. I think you're making a proposal to go with the officer's recommendation. Yeah. Thanks, Aaron. Okay. Do I have a seconder for that? Councillor Robinson, Paul, you were in first. I'll second that. That's sure. Okay. Yeah. Room for discussion, but outside of this, it'll have to be a new application. I think it probably will have a positive outcome. I've got a proposal, uh, duly seconded, proposed by Councillor Thompson, seconded by Councillor Robinson, to go with the officer's recommendation refuse. All agreed? Agreed. Thank you very much. Oh, Councillor Feely, are you... Yeah, well, well I, I would really agree with it because I'm, I'm still on the opinion that it does replace the characteristics of a, of a dwelling. So I just want to. Are you abstaining or just yes. abstaining? Right, okay. So it's uh, majority apart from Councillor Feely. Okay. Seamus, would you um, round yep. up, please? So, members, uh, application number two, LA 10 2022 uh, Recommendation was to refuse uh, planning permission for the reasons within the report and subject to one reason. Members have agreed with this recommendation and planning permission is to be refused. Thank you very much indeed. We'll now move on to application number three, LA 10, bar 2022, bar 1259, application for a dwelling and attached garage. Seamus? Yep. So, members, application number three, LA 10, 2022, 1259F, for a dwelling and garage at 80 metres northeast of 43 Rakirn Road, Rakirnberg. Beg for more. Uh, the applicant is H. O'Brien, and the recommendation is to refuse planning permission. So, the first slide you can see is the submitted site location plan. The site proposed is outlined in red. Uh, other land owned or controlled by the applicant is identified in blue. Uh, the block plan on a better scale shows the, the dwelling. Uh, located alongside on a roadside plot uh, in a wider agricultural field uh, to the immediate west, to the left-hand side, across the road is an existing farm group which is on the, the farmland. The full application, a uh, single-storey dwelling uh, with integral garage. This uh, aerial image shows the site identified by the red star relative to the buildings and you can see in the trees uh, yeah, farm buildings, uh, the, the red arrow uh, showing the, the distance and the, the, the location of one with the other. Uh, established buildings on the farm again to the left of the image, uh, the red star indicating the site uh, under consideration and the yellow star indicates uh, a site available. Uh, in proximity or in closer proximity to the existing buildings on the farm. So this is the one of the farm maps. Uh, again, the agricultural or the farm buildings shown by the red star, the blue star indicates the site of the dwelling or the application site under consideration. Uh, Google Street View imagery showing the site identified by the red arrow. Um, the yellow star on the previous slide showing the uh, preferred site identified by officers is through the three trees on the right hand side. You can just see a field beyond the, the first set of trees on the right hand side of the road. The farm buildings being on through that uh, into the second field, if you like. In the opposite direction, then you can see identified by the yellow star or the yellow uh, arrow is the access lane to the farm buildings. Uh, beyond the yellow arrow is the site, the alternative site identified by officers, while the application site is beyond again in the, in the foreground uh, identified by the, the red arrow. A difficulty or a, a reason for refusal presented on this application is that um, to allow a dwelling to be approved uh, on the application site, and I'll go back to identify its location on the red star here. Uh, the aerial imagery now shown, the red star is immediately south of the application site. And again, as with a similar or a previous application, to approve the dwelling, uh, a proposed would uh, 
lead to the creation of ribbon development and the creation of a, an infill opportunity at the Red Star. Uh, it has been mentioned that other land around the farm grouping has been discounted due to surface water flooding. Uh, this map from the flood maps NA shows the areas of surface water flooding uh, identified there by the purple wash, um, but the site that uh, has been identified as suitable uh, is outside that area. Uh, other sites are believed to exist. This is another farm map um, of land farmed by the applicant um, and another farm group at it. So you can see that there's field 13 immediately south of the farm group and the access lane uh, would be suitable for a site. Uh, field 11 also, um, there's scope within the, the wider farm holding to offer alternative sites that would meet with policy and allow a building to visually link or cluster with a group of buildings on the farm. So for the sorry. So for the reasons listed within the report and in line with the wording of the transitional arrangements in the 2015 LDP regulations, when reading both the DDP and the plan strategy together, the proposal does not accord with the LDP for the reasons stated. And there are no other material considerations to indicate that it should be approved contrary to the LDP. It is recommended, therefore, that the application is refused for the following reasons. Number one being that the proposal is contrary to strategic policy SP01, furthering sustainable development, and policy DE03, sustaining rural communities, and policy HOU11, dwelling on a farm business, as the site for the new dwelling is not visually linked or set to cluster with an established group of buildings on the farm holding, and there are no farm activities which would significantly affect the amenity of the new dwelling, or there are verifiable plans to expand the farm at the group. And there are, as we've discussed, alternative sites at the farm groups, and the site is not as close as possible to the existing groups of buildings. The second reason being that the proposal is contrary to policy, strategic policy SP01, policy DE05, as the development would, if permitted, cause, create a ribbon of development and create the potential for further infill development opportunities. Thanks very much, Seamus. We have speaking rights now from the agent, Paul. I see you in the chamber. Paul, if you dress yourself the whole way around here. Oh, right, okay. Speaker I, number two. I got a Kerry. Thank you, Chair. And it's just a wee point in relation to the, the graphics as presented to us here. It's an excellent uh, addition now to the, 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 the way we were. We have it in front of us. But just on the page, oh, sorry, I'm not sure what page it is, the number. Page 34. Uh, the red star as the indicator for infill, but in the previous application, there was yellow rectangles indicated to show potential infill. And I think it was a gray rectangle to indicate the application. Say it was much simpler and indicative of what infill meant as opposed to the red star, just to make that common. Chair. No, that's okay. It's a, it's a work in progress with this, so we'll take all that on board. Are you happy enough? Okay, Seamus. Paul, are you happy enough? You know the reason that you've got 10 minutes, basically, you may or may not have questions. Once we're finished with the question session, if that's it, if you could dress back to your chair, then we'll carry on. Uh, you good to go? And could you bring that down and speak into the mic? Yeah. Lean in. That's it. Away you go, Paul. Um, don't touch. I do touch. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> yeah. Away you go. All right. Okay, yeah. I'd firstly, thank you to the committee for calling this in for further consideration. Um, the refusal recommendation for this application has two primary refusal reasons. Number one concerns the siting of the proposed dwelling in relation to the farm group and the option of alternative sites. Number two concerns ribbon development and the creation of further infill site opportunities. But if the committee doesn't mind, I will address number two first to allow it to be ruled out of this discussion as the number one refusal does appear to be the main concern here. For number two, the planning report presented to the committee suggests at the top of page five that the approval of this application would allow for an infill site to the southwest of the site. If the members look at the maps, there is only one dwelling, number 43, along with some farm buildings to the southwest. This group of buildings is contained within one cartilage with one access centrally into the farmyard, the central building was the original replacement dwelling for number 43, 
and the group is clearly surrounded by a large mature hedge enclosing this as a cartilage. The cartilage round number 43 and the FR site was approved would only make two cartilages with a small gap in between. And as the members are quite aware and were shown in the first application, three cartilages would be required for an infill opportunity to exist. So on this basis, this opportunity as noted in this report will not exist. And this refusal reason should be set aside on that basis. Moving to reason number one, this is broken into sub-reasons A and B, with A stating that the proposed site is not digitally linked to cluster with the farm group of buildings, and more so that there are no verifiable plans to expand on the farm. B states that there are alternative sites to farm groups, and the site is not as close as possible to the existing farm group of buildings. What planning policy HOU11 does not take into account is that behind every farm business is a family, and a family has needs and plans to ensure that they can live on their farm holdings. The planning report shows that there are two farm groups on this farm business. The one we are discussing today at Rickeyan Road and another group at Corrisheskin Road. At the Corrisheskin Road, there is a farm group and this already has three occupied dwellings within the family. And this is all located around that grouping. The future owner of that farm group already occupies one of these dwellings. Whereas our proposal that the Rakeen Road Farm Group would be the first occupied dwelling on this farm group, there's an existing group of buildings, including a dwelling known as number 44 on all the mapping systems. The Brian family have plans for two farm groups to be handed down to various family members. And one has plans to replace the existing dwelling, number 44, in the field that is in between our site and the existing farm group. So basically, this will essentially the old dwelling is vernacular and it should be retained as a farm group uh, or a farm building and any sites to the north and west of the existing dwelling is where all the flooding occurs. Due to this the only options at this farm group for building safe dwellings that will not flood is to the northeast of the existing dwelling. Once the replacement dwelling is located in the first field and um, to the northeast then the next site available is our proposed site. The flooding is shown on our plans and noted on page six of the planning report, and this has been verified by Seamus. I know planning will emphasize that these are not verifiable plans, but they are the family plans, and if really required, we could lodge an application for the replacement dwelling on this site tomorrow, and this would show the firm commitment. Secondly, the family's plans to build on this site has always been on record, and there was verifiable plans for this site, and this is clarified in the top of page three of the plan report, and it's, um, it was always the plan to build on this site for this family. Due to an oversight, this was not commenced on time, and this application is to ratify that. Moving on to the actual site position and its visual linkage with the farm group of buildings, I would point out that this farm group and our site is fully surrounded by large mature trees and vegetation. This is confirmed within the report before the committee. What this does is allow that at certain vantage points when traveling along the Rakeen Road from both directions, this farm group is hard to view unless you're really looking for it or know that it's there. However, notwithstanding this, as part of the planning statement we submitted to this application, we've shown views where the site will be clearly visible when viewed at the farm group entrance, and it is literally only 50 meters away from the nearest building. In the images that we submitted, the, the, this is 50 metres would be normal distances for sites around a farm group and the actual entrance to the farm group is only 30 metres away from the edge of our site. It is clear from the images that we have submitted, although I know they're not shown in this report, but they're, on, they're submitted as part of the plan, it's clearly visible and from both approaches on either side and all images show that the site entrance viewing towards farm group will visually link. Outside of these views, the farm group is screened with trees. In addition to the visual aspect of the site, the Rakeen Road is a minor road that is predominantly only used by local traffic. The one thing about local traffic in a farming rural area is that everyone on that road will know what land belongs to what farm. There will be no question that the proposed dwelling belongs to the O'Brien farm, to the local community that travel this road each day. Page six on the planning report refers to the guidance publication building on tradition and the need for the site to be visually interlinked. It also states that a sequential report, approach to site selection must be used and this has been done in this application as previously stated. 
Our applicant's family are clearly not going to build in land that has a history of flooding, so the site is the next sequential position to this farm group. While we strongly contend that the proposed site will visually link in any case, I would also highlight that the same building on tradition guidance that the planning report has quoted also shows in the same page, and I will quote, that a site may be acceptable when it is visually linked to a large stand of mature trees or established mature field boundaries, even though the house is not visually linked to the existing farm group. There are that many trees around this farm grouping that the new dwelling may not be seen from various approaches. Our site is clearly doing what the guidance allows, and this shows that our site is compliant with the planning guidance. Should the committee agree that it doesn't link to the farm group visually, it is clearly visually linked to the large stand of trees and hedges at the very least. This gives the committee cover to grant permission as this is set out in planning guidance. Should the council insist on total visual linkage in and around this site, the client would have been better to remove all the surrounding trees in the farm. We may not be here today because it would be fully visible. However, I don't think this is something the council would promote. And the site is within acceptable distances of similar approvals from the council and the trees will allow this site to totally absorb in the surrounding farm group and the large stands of trees, as the guidance suggests is a sound approach. In summary, the planning report quotes that from the local development plan, there are 14 policies relevant to the site. Out of 14, the report confirms that the site is fully acceptable for 12 out of the 14. And for the best part, to confirm that the site actually meets most parts of the remaining two policies to do rural policy. However, as I've just stated above, we do meet these policies. This proposal is located on a site that had verifiable plans to build here. The only other possible site at this farm group is for the future replacement of number 44, otherwise it'll be in a flooded area. There are no occupied dwellings at this farm, and this will revitalize this farm holding and add security on this farm location. Site will visually link to the farm group, and at the very least, visually links to the mature trees surrounding the site as the guidance permits. No infill opportunities will be created by this proposal, as there would only be two cartilages whereas three would be required to meet this infill policy. Thank you for your time and welcome any questions. Thank you very much indeed, Paul. It's succinct and within the time. Uh, could you just wait there? Members, do you have any questions to pose to Paul? Uh, I'll look online. Uh, Bernard, um, David, do you have any questions? Yep. Seeing nothing there. Councillor McCann, Stephen? Thank you, Chair, and thanks, Paul, for your for your presentation. Uh, just remind me, Paul, uh, you referenced some distances from the proposed site to the farm buildings. What were they again? Sorry, uh, from the edge of our site to the nearest farm building is about fifty-one meters. Fifty-one meters. And from the actual road entrance into the farm grouping, it's only thirty meters to the edge of it. When you're standing at that road entrance, you're seeing the shed and you're seeing the site side by side. But none of the planning images are showing you that. But they're they're in the submission that I've updated on the site. Okay, no, that's, all, that's okay. Okay, thank you. Any further questions? I'm not seeing any further questions. Paul, could you withdraw back to your seat, yeah. please? Thanks very much. Thank you. Seamus, could you sum up? Yep. Yeah. So, um, I suppose the, the few things I wanted to touch on there. Um, the flooding issue, I suppose, it came to that side, slide first. Um, the alternative site that has been identified by officers is not shown to flood, and, and we haven't, I suppose, disputed that. Um, the infill opportunity, um, you can see on this image, although it's not that abundantly clear, but there's a curtilage around the most the house in the, the most proximate, proximate house to the Red Star has a, a defined curtilage and garden running into the, the, the corner, um, while the other buildings are accessed and front directly onto the road. So it is the belief of officers that if this proposal were approved and constructed, that it would be very difficult to argue against granting an infill site at the location of the Red Star. Um, Uh, the images are shown, they're not, I suppose, shown to, to try and trick or uh, 
Hoodwink, um, they're showing the situation on the ground um, as you travel along the road. Uh, your eyes not drawn towards any buildings as they're set down the lane. They're drawn towards what you're seeing here. So it's it's just showing the, the situation as it is on the ground. Okay. Any further questions for Seamus? Not seeing anything online or in the chamber. Um, that doesn't preclude us asking a late question. Um, come to decision time again. So you've had the presentation from the agent and you've had Seamus's original presentation and his comments with regard to what Paul has said. So members, if you could consider and decide what you want to do. Thank you. Stephen, go ahead. Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, uh, there's a lot of information that's been presented by by Seamus and indeed Paul on behalf of the of the applicant. Uh, I accept the argument put forward by by Mr. Bradley that this does constitute a a, a farm a farm building, a, which does visually in, uh, integrate to the to the farm holdings. Indeed, fifty one meters. I do, this this committee has in the past regularly approved farm buildings in excess of that distance. And indeed, if you count the access to the site, which he references, of thirty two meters, it's well within what's been accepted by this committee before as a visually linkage. Uh, Councillor Wire made a very valid point in terms of the of the diagrams used in the last presentation to show infill. You know, I would struggle uh, to see how an infill opportunity could be created, Chair, if this was granted approval. You know, there's a substantial cartilage to the building on the bottom left with a very small gap onto the road, which I fail to see how an infill, an infill opportunity would be granted uh, or uh, arise if this application was granted. So with them comments made, Chair, I propose that we do uh, not go ahead with the officer's recommendations and we grant approval in this case. Thank you, Chair. Just before I leave you, I just want to clarify uh, with Seamus, have you presented up enough information to overturn the um, points for refusal? I just ask Seamus or Paul, who wants to come in? Yeah, it's Chair, maybe just to make, make one point and look, it's entirely a, a matter for members. They make a judgment on, on the cartilage. I think for me, it's just it's a very restrictive uh, interpretation of the cartilage to say all those buildings are within one. And I think that would limit us going forward then, if we were saying um, that, that all those buildings were within one. I think it would l limit further opportunities coming through under that particular policy, because then we would be grouping all those buildings and saying they're all within the one cartilage. And so it would be harder for agents saying they, they demonstrate that there was a built up frontage along the road. So. I suppose like, it's entirely a matter for you, but I see that that type of an interpretation then for me going forward would, would, would potentially limit opportunities coming through under the policy. Thanks, Chair. Stephen? If I could just respond to that, Chairman. Uh, in the last presentation, there was a very clear diagram uh, presented showing the infill opportunities that could have been created if that application had been approved. You know, if we had the same diagram on this application showing clearly where the infill opportunities would have been created, you know, we could have debated on it further possibly. I, for one, can't see them. You know, su substantial cartilage there to the left-hand side. How that gap remaining would, would uh, create an infill opportunity, I just, don't, I just don't see it. Had it been presented to me today, how, uh, how it would have been, well, listen, it would be open for further discussion. In terms of the reasons for refusal, Chairman, I think I've addressed them uh, adequately. Uh, section B, there is no alternative sites at the forum groups and the site is not as close as possible to the existing group of buildings. Well, if you look at the policy, it states it must be visually linked. It doesn't state it must be as close as possible, and I've argued that it's visually linked. So, uh, thank you, Chair. No, that, that's okay. I just want to make sure that we're clear. and you, You're clear? Yep, that's okay. Councillor Campbell, Glenn? Thanks, Chairman. Well, I mean, I too um, felt that the representation from the, the agent was sort of comprehensive and, and addressed the the, the concerns of officers in respect to the policy, and I would second Councillor McCann and his proposal, Chairman. Councillor Reilly, I think you're going to come in. Alan, yeah. sorry, go ahead. Happy to support. Right, that's okay. The, the proposal and the yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all right. I haven't got, I haven't put it in the committee yet. 
Right, we've got a proposal uh, to go against the officer's recommendation. Are there any contrary proposals? Don't see anything coming forward. So I've got a proposal from Councillor McCann, seconded by Councillor Campbell, uh, and that is to go against the officer's recommendation and the proposal is to approve. And I believe Councillor McCann, you provide enough information in your estimation, and I think the officers, to actually overcome the two reasons for refusal. So members, the um, proposal is to approve. Are we all agreed? Could I see either hands up or otherwise from the two on WebEx, please? Yep, I see approval. Anybody against? That's unanimous. Thank you very much indeed. Seamus. Okay, members, so uh, application number three, planning reference LA 10, 2022, 1259 for dwelling in the attached yardage at 80 metres northeast of 43 Rakirin Road, the more. Uh, recommendation was to refuse planning permission for the reasons within the report, subject to two reasons. Members have went contrary to this recommendation and have decided to grant, grant planning permission. Uh, at this stage, officers would uh, request that permission to attach conditions is delegated back to officers. Uh, Other proposal, second, are happy enough with that. You'll include that in your proposal. Yep, we're all agreed. Yep. That's okay. Uh, can we take on board, Seamus, maybe the item that uh, Councillor McGuire has talked yes. about the graphics, I think? That's, that's not. And Councillor McCann, yeah. It's just a small point, but it's a, a visual aid to help us in the discussion. Okay, that's application three dealt with. We'll go on to now application number four. That's LA10 bar 2023 bar 2108, retention of access pillars, walls, and gates. Um, Seamus? Yep. So application number four is LA10 2023 2108 for retention of access pillars, walls, and gates with extension to curtilage at 55 Curra Road, Berra. Applicant is R. Scott. Uh, we have had um, a supporting statement submitted by Chair Luke Gurley uh, in regards to the application. I'll go through a small summary. Uh, Mr. Gurley indicates the proposal accords with policies D01, TR01, and TR04, and that the existing established access serves two dwellings and a farm and a busy fuel supply enterprise with significant traffic movements, which would have implications were the uh, dwelling under consideration or the access under con consideration to be uh, forced to utilize it. The fuel business utilizes articulated tankers and on occasion uh, there has to be, they have to wait to enter or egress from the site. The road safety issues that this can result in. This is only a brief summary of the support and information provided. I'm sure Charlie will flesh this out a bit more later on. Um, I'd also like to clarify that DFI roads have had sight of the statement uh, compiled by Turlock, uh, but have maintained their opinion that refusal be recommended. So uh, I'll give you the specifics of the case. So we have this site uh, as identified in red, uh, sitting alongside the, the Curra Road, um, six mile cross or Barra. Uh, this is the granted block plan that shows the dwelling um, with the curtilage defined by the hedgerow identified by the red line. Uh, access was to be uh, off the existing access road uh, identified here off out of the site by the, the red arrow. Um, what we have in front of us now is the existing access as approved is maintained but a new access uh, has been created through the front of the site and out directly onto the, the Kerr Road. Uh, that's the aerial image of the situation as it exists, the yellow star indicating the access point onto the protected route, the Kerr Road, the red arrow indicating the approved access, which utilizes the existing access road. This is a street view image of the existing access that serves the other dwellings and the farm and the fuel oil, the oil business, um, showing you that this is quite a substantial access with uh, potential for uh, vehicles to meet at the at the outset. Uh, this aerial imagery here shows uh, the access, the fuel act, the 
business access that was approved to, to serve the dwelling and the road junctions, uh, the one to the north, uh, serving, uh, that's the road that goes back in towards Berra, while the other junction further up the road uh, goes towards Sescanor or Clahar. Um, so it's just highlighting the, the, the range of access points that are in close proximity to this and the, the proliferation that now exists on the ground. Um, the snap here of the protected routes policy, um, you'll have time, you've had time to read that yourselves, it indicates that a dwelling that serves the need, a farm dwelling, uh, that would meet the criteria for development in the countryside, which this proposal has, and where access cannot reasonably be obtained from an adjacent minor road, the use of an existing vehicular access onto the, permitted, the protected route would be permitted. Uh, the case being made here that uh, a, an access route to serve this dwelling was applied for uh, under, the, under the original application and granted, and this has now transpired as a result of unauthorised development. So, um, just sum up. So for the reasons listed within the report on the line with the wording of the transitional arrangements in the 2015 LDP regulations, when reading both the DDP and the plan strategy together, the proposal does not accord with the LDP for the reasons stated, and there are reasons stated, and there are no other material considerations to indicate that it should be approved contrary to the LDP. It is recommended that the application is refused for the following reasons. The first one being the proposal is contrary to strategic policy SP01, policy DE01 and DE03 and policy TR01 as the retention of the access arrangements will prejudice road safety and significantly inconvenience the flow of traffic onto the protected route. The second reason being that the, policy, the proposal is contra contrary to strategic policy SP01, DE01, DE03 and policy TR04 protected routes as access can reasonably be obtained from an adjacent minor road and the development would, if permitted, result in the retention of a new access directly onto a protected route, thereby prejudicing the free flow of traffic and conditions of general safety. Yeah, there are speaking rights here, but before we move on to uh, the speaking rights, Council Mahan, David, do you have a specific have question? A specific question. Yeah, no, just thank you, Chair. I'm going to have to leave the meeting at this juncture. I have another meeting out at three thirty. Just wanted to make you aware. Thank you. That's that's okay. Thank you very that's much okay. for doing that. All the best in your other meeting. Thank you. Um, right, we have speaking rights from Fannigage and Turlock Early. Turlock, if you could go to position number two. Been here before, but not recently. Turlock, uh, ten minutes to present. Uh, there may be questions that may not at the end. You've seen sort of the way we've dealt with Paul. If there are no questions, or you've answered all the questions. I'll ask you to go back to your seat. Um, are you happy to start? Right, I'll make you live, and if you could speak into the microphone, that's great. Thank you yeah. very much, Dick. Away you go, thank you Chair. Uh, thank you, Chair and members, for allowing me time to speak to you this afternoon and present this case. Um, I suppose. If the members are aware, the dwelling has the benefit of planning permission uh, through an existing access which serves uh, another dwelling and that busy uh, Scots Fuels, I'm sure the members are all aware of, of the size of that business and, and the amount of vehicles involved in it, including articulated fuel tankers as well. So we have a situation here, uh, and I know that there's the, the refusal reasons in relation to SP01 and DOE1. DE01 and DE03, but I think the critical aspect here, they relate in, in some element to traffic safety, but the critical aspect is, is TR01 and TR04, which is the road safety issue. And I think all matters uh, outside that are, are addressed and, and to the satisfaction of the planning department. So really we're talking about road safety uh, and the practicalities of that. Um, as I said in the statement, the access, the, the intensification of use uh, and vehicle movements associated with this house have already been decided as acceptable under the planning commission for the dwelling, albeit through the existing entrance. Um, the, the, therefore, the, 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 the movements uh, associated with that dwelling are deemed acceptable and are occurring. 
And I suppose the critical aspect then is whether or not uh, a second access is uh, of any uh, material, consider uh, material difference in terms of road safety. Uh, and what I would say, and what I've said in my statement is, there are practicalities for relocating and creating a new entrance away from the existing entrance, and that is to do with the activity already through that uh, entrance. Uh, if you can imagine a situation where there's an articulated uh, HGV fuel tanker coming down that laneway, waiting to turn right for Belfast, which is the most uh, uh, frequented journey to get fuel supplies, uh, a car coming from OMA that's associated with the dwelling that we're talking about, wanting to turn into that entrance, um, they will have to wait until that tanker leaves that entrance before they can turn in. And the reason for that is that the laneway is less than four metres wide from a point 15 metres back from the road. An articulated lorry is 17 metres long. So you would need at least 20 metres of a wide entrance to get up and around the back of the articulated lorry. So that results in a situation where the car, if it does turn into the bell mouth, is sitting alongside the lorry, the articulated lorry, the articulated lorry turning right could collide, particularly the trailer could collide with the car sitting in the entrance of the bell mouth because it cannot get past it up the laneway. So there, there's an issue there of a car sitting, waiting to turn right on the main road, a tanker waiting to get a gaps in traffic in both directions to get out onto the main road to let the car back in, and no right turning lane and a busy A5. Uh, this obviously has particular uh, considerations in terms of road safety and increasing the potential for an accident, whereas at the entrance that we're seeking to uh, retain would allow the car to get quickly off the road as soon as a gap, uh, if it's coming from the Oma direction, as soon as a gap appears from the Belfast direction, it will get quickly off the road and into its own bell mouth and not be relying on other vehicles leaving the entrance because there is that uh, sufficient capacity for the car to turn off the road and get in there. So there's clear practical considerations here. And as I said, we're not asking for intensification of the access or additional traffic movements. We're just trying to improve the situation which has already been approved for the dwelling. And um, there's other matters in, 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 that have been highlighted in the agent markets cares um, submission as well. And he has also drawn attention to uh, other previous cases, particularly one uh, first, further up the road for Mr. Bustard, where a similar situation arose where the dwelling was accessed off an existing laneway into farmland. Uh, the dwelling, the applicants of the dwelling, the occupants of the dwelling were having a situation where they were driving into the laneway and then meeting a tractor and tanker before they got to their branch off to the house and having to reverse back out onto the roadway again. And it was determined that an entrance closer to Oma would be acceptable to allow, to prevent that situation happening. And this is essentially the same situation, only in a much busier, much more frequented, much more uh, uh, heavier goods vehicles involvement. Uh, and again, we have a situation where there's junctions and things like that. There's a lot of distractions and less distractions would be more sensible, logical and less uh, potential for uh, accidents because the car going through this new entrance would be off fairly quickly and wouldn't be waiting, and wouldn't be distracting or causing potential for access. So it, it, it's a logical progression in terms of trying to resolve any potential traffic issues here. It's not going to create traffic issues. It's the opposite. It's going to try and improve the situation and reduce the potential for conflict and vehicles waiting on the road and vehicles taking chances. Um, there's other situations in terms of children going to school. They're not, they're not at, at, at the secondary school age yet, but they will be at secondary school age in, in the next few years. And they will be standing at the end of that entrance as well if the proposed entrance is blocked up and removed. So they will be there standing with tankers and other vehicles going in and outwards past them. The other, of course, issue, and I'm sure the members are all fully aware of this, the A5, this section of the road is due to be bypassed. And we're hoping that will happen in the next three to five years when the construction work is completed. So essentially, we have a situation where this road will no longer be protected route. And we see concerns in terms of traffic safety with the situation if this entrance wasn't allowed to be approved. And that's how this situation arose in the first place, that there was a, a concern about the busyness of that junction, that, that laneway into the, into the business, and how that would impact on the occupants of the dwelling that we're talking about. Um, I suppose that's, that's uh, my position on it, that I see a logical uh, improvement here rather than an issue with road safety. I note that road service have come back, but they haven't disputed the fact that I've said that 
uh, the laneway is only is less than four meters wide after 15 meters, which is less than the length of articulated lorry. And they haven't made any comment on the issue about vehicles having to wait to turn right and the potential uh, uh, for accidents from rear ending and things like that. Whereas a car turning into its own separate entrance would be off much quicker. And we all know that the busyness of that, that business is a substantial business that's been there for 30 years, significant uh, uh, transport movements, articulated lorries and, and other ve vehicles as well. So it's something that I would see as an improvement to the traffic situation rather than a detriment to it. And I would ask members to, to bear that in mind in terms of a practical uh, solution to the situation as it stands. Have you finished, Sherlock? Uh, I have a few more minutes. Yeah, you yeah. have another. Yeah, just, just in terms of the policy, um, and I'll just probably wrap up with this. Um, policy uh, TRO um, 4 in terms of protected routes, and section D of that says in case protected route outside settlements where the development is for a farm dwelling or dwelling service in either established commercial or industrial enterprise, or is other development, in which case this, this was a farm dwelling. Uh, it would meet the criteria for development country where access cannot reasonably be obtained from an adjacent minor road. Well, that's obviously not a possibility. Use of an existing vehicle or access on the protected route will be permitted. I don't see in that policy where it prohibits the creation of a new access if that can't be done either. Um, and, and that's something the members, I don't know whether it's intentional or not, but it does not say you will not get a new access if you can't use an existing access. I think that's something to bear in mind. It doesn't prohibit what we're asking for today. It doesn't prevent it. Thank you, Chair. Finish now? Yes, thanks. Thank you very much indeed. Finish within the time. Uh, any questions, members, for Turlock? Okay, Councillor McCann, Stephen. Thank you, Chair, and uh, thanks, Turlock, for your presentation. I suppose as a HGV driver myself, I can relate exactly to the situations you're describing in terms of access and, and cars waiting to, to get in if you're coming out and so on. Uh, in terms of the access that's proposed, is that currently in use, Turlock? Yes. It's currently in use. See in slide 45, you must, uh, it shows the aerial view and it shows the, the proposed access. That, that's on the right-hand side of the existing access. Is that towards Oma? Or is that towards Balibali? Is that back towards Oma? Just so we can get the bearings. Oma, Oma is north, um, uh, northwest, and um, Balagoli is southeast. Okay. So the top is heading towards Oma, and heading towards the bottom is heading towards Balagoli. Okay. okay. Uh, I do have a concern. Uh, I'm sympathetic completely to to the to the applicant. I do have a concern that one of our consultees, DFA Roads, has has issued a. a advice that B should be uh, rejecting this application, Turla. Uh, it, it, it does say, Seamus, that they have provided additional comments there. Can you summarise them comments? I uh, just don't have them in front of me. They're probably in the portal, I'm sure. So, Seamus will reply to you afterwards. I, yeah, I would just like to see... You're directing it direct towards um, Turla at the yeah, moment. Yeah, no problem at all. I suppose that's just kind of my question at the moment, just to get the... That's OK. Just to get the access confirmed, if it wasn't used or not at the moment. Any further questions for Turla, then? No, I don't see any online or in the chamber. Turlock, you can withdraw back to your seat. Thank you. There are no representations, I think, um, from public reps. So it's back to you, Seamus, basically, to sum up. Yeah, yeah. well, Paul, first of all. Yeah, thanks, Chair. And, and look, Seamus can come on uh, afterwards. If you allow him. Members, uh, just to pick up on a few points, really. Um, in terms of the policy, I know the, the, the agent there in presenting the case has said that it's not clear from the policy um, that a new access isn't acceptable. For me, it's, it's, it is pretty clear. It doesn't say in any of the exceptions that a new access, particularly in point D, you know, it, it gives two options and none of them as a, as a new a new access. So, uh, from my from my reading of the policy, it's pretty clear. Um, that a new access is not permitted. It also it points you in the direction of um, using an access on an existing road or reusing a, a, a laneway, and that's also clarified in the policy clarification. Agents also referred to uh, at least one case in the speaking rights, which is comparable. 
the three cases that was presented, they also set out in the report, and we've set out the reasons why they aren't comparable, and each application on its own merits. In relation to the, the new A5 West Rome corridor, members will be aware of the position of that. Um, we're still waiting really on a decision um, from the inquiry. Uh, I know the PAC reports went to the DFI, but we have had no, no direction since then. Um, and there's no indication from DFI roads at this stage of well or that that road at the minute would, would, would fall and no longer be a protected route. So, um, members, that's, that's just a few comments. Thanks, Chair. No problem at all, Chairman. Do you want to write yeah, up? Well, uh, I suppose uh, just to pick up on what, what Paul has said there, um, the situation, I suppose, that Turlock, or one of the situations that Turlock has, has mentioned, um, cars waiting to on the carriageway while another car could be this situation can exist on this existing access already. We have a farm, we have a fuel business, we have a dwelling. So that situation may be in, in place already. And to introduce another access a short distance down the road would only lead to exacerbation of a problem of traffic backing up on the road and the, the incidents of traffic starting to manoeuvre again and then only having to slow down again with another access. No one, I suppose, as proliferation of accesses. Um, in terms of what uh, Councillor McCann had asked, um, I suppose it's, it's important to note that road service have had very little time to comment on it. Um, this information was only received yesterday or the evening before at the very earliest. Um, so their comments are helpful to receive, but they didn't have a lot of time to go into any of this in great detail due to the, the short time frames. Um, but uh, just to, to answer your question, Councillor, uh, their comments state that the letter doesn't change DFI Road's opinion on the application, which is based upon the policy contained in TR01 and TR04. Um, they are not requesting speaking rights, given, again, the short time frames of the receipt of the statement. Chairman Seamus, before bringing in Councillor Campbell, Paul, do you want to come back in? Yeah, yeah, thanks, Chair. I suppose, members, just a, a few other points, and really it's, it's a matter for yourselves as the decision makers. Um, what the agent didn't say is that uh, the land, land sur surrounding the existing laneway is all within the blue, all within the control. So there's no reason why that laneway couldn't be widened, um, couldn't be um, lay by, uh, set on at the, at the junction, at the access. There's, there's a number of other options that could be looked at there um, to make that laneway suitable for all the traffic that's on it, um, rather than the creation of a, of a new access point. For me, it's uh, the existing movements may be approved, but it's the location of those movements and the proliferation of the accesses. And members will be aware, look, you know, there, there is significant safety issues along this road. Uh, we're all very aware of that. And the expert consultee here in terms of road safety and road safety matters is telling us as a council that this isn't acceptable. Thanks, Chair. Thanks very much. Councillor Clamble, Glenn. Thank you, Chair. I suppose she must touched on the point I was going to query, really. You know, a road service have responded and seemingly with very little time, so we appreciate that. And it's not always a consultee will get back, uh, even if they're given longer, you know, in time for us to take it on board. But I suppose it, it would be, you know, it, it does leave you wondering would a more comprehensive view from road service help the committee here? Because um, there is risks with the existing uh, approved access. I mean, that's been outlaid by the agent, um, not just to the, the, the family of the applicant or future members of the family, if you like, or people from that family access, but also people accessing the business. So we're not really getting a sense of which which is worse, you know, which access is worse in terms of, um, oh, Seamus, you make the point that a second has to be worse, and that's uh, what you said there. But I just think that it would have been beneficial, road service, you know, they hadn't time to make representation here, but we haven't really had road service here that often, and I think it's something that, that just a comment that it would be helpful if they were able to come, you know. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, Glenn, thanks. Paul, do you want to come back? Thanks, Chair. And look, uh, Councillor and, and, and members, it's, it's it's really a matter for yourselves again. Uh, you know, if, if you feel you need DFI to attend, um, I think we have had a late statement. We have consulted DFI. We've got a view from them, 
I think for me it's pretty black and white um, their position on it. So I'm not sure there's much merit in uh, deferring or looking for any further comment on it. Um, they're they're pointing them um, the applicant to the laneway, and when you're weighing up which which is the worst option, I suppose it's just to be mindful that there is mitigation. The laneway, the existing laneway, can be widened. Um, there can be mitigations put in there to address the conflicts and movements along the laneway, where there can't be when you create a new access. Um, and that just creates a proliferation of access, and that's what the danger is. Thanks, Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor Thompson. Earl. Thanks very much, Chair. Thank you, Seamus and, and Paul. I find myself in a bit of a predicament with this one because uh, I know exactly the area that I said. I know exactly the lane that's been used by all those vehicles on a daily basis. And, uh, and if you're going to get refuels and everything else, and lorries coming and going at all times, the night and day, maybe six days a week. Uh, just to query for yourself, Seamus, just with regard to the new entrance, how long has it been in operation? <clears throat> was, uh, it was we council enforce or planning enforcement were made aware of it. Uh, it sorry. Um, council, the, the enforcement section were made aware of that a number of months ago now. What their investigations have revealed and how long it's been in operation, I'm not 100% sure. And um, the house itself is not built and occupied more than two years. So you, I, and I don't recall the access having been uh, put in place immediately after that. So I would say if it's in existence 12 months, it's probably around that, no more. Thanks, Seamus, for that. Uh, as I say, I find myself in a bit of a predicament with this one, Chair. And uh, to me, the new entrance makes perfect sense. But I know it's against, as I know it's, it's going against uh, uh, the road service uh, point of view and it's going against protected routes. So uh, I'm going to call in Philip here just to give us uh, a legal perspective, perspective on this before you make any further comment. Philip? Thank you, Chair. So, members, it's just to remind you. you pull down and lean in. Philip. Yeah, sure. It's just to remind members of the um, when we're looking at statutory consultees and the the advice that we've given on training in relation to this, where the case law stands in relation to statutory uh, consultees. Obviously, members, the, the um, position is that just because a statutory consultee some, says something doesn't absolve you of your um, requirement to carefully evaluate the evidence that has been assembled uh, in relation to the matter and to reach your own conclusion. However, um, members, you should be and have previously been referred to the case of Shadwell Estates v Breckland, um, where the judge said that a decision maker should give the views of statutory consultees great or considerable weight and a departure from those views requires cogent and compelling reasons. So members, if you are of the view that this is a matter where you want to dis, um, depart from the view of the statutory consultee. You can only do so uh, in a situation where you are able to provide cogent and compelling reasons why it is required in this particular case. That's obviously your role as the decision maker then to take a view in relation to that. Thank you, Philip. Councillor Riley, Thomas. Chair, <clears throat> can I ask the Paul brought up the, the obvious uh, uh, or one of the obvious solutions, the widening of the lane to mitigate against the, the having to wait for the lorry to pull out and whatever. Was that discussed with the uh, applicant or agent? And if so, uh, what was the view on that? I'll refer to Seamus for that, uh, Tom. Uh, no discussions were uh, entered into, I suppose, the the recommendation of officers was related to the planning agent at the time, uh, the reasons presented and the difficulty with the case presented, uh, as well as the comments from DFA Roads. And this wasn't uh, offered. They didn't come back with uh, the, the desire to explore this. They expressed the desire to proceed to recommendation. Okay, Councillor McGuire. I'm going to carry you in light of the conversation that, uh, that uh, has taken place. Uh, 
and, and given that uh, the primary reason is to that it would potentially prejudice road safety, I'm happy enough to recommend the officer's recommendations. Chair Romaga. Thank you very much. I've got a proposal to go with the officer's recommendation to refuse by Councillor McGuire. Do I have a seconder for that? Councillor McCann, Stephen. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm completely sympathetic with the applicant and what they're what they're trying to do, and I am supportive of it. However, uh, following Phillips' input there, you know, we really don't have any opportunity or any alternative, I should say, other than propose or support the recommendation from the planning team. I suppose as someone who sat through the A5 public inquiry for, for many days and listened to some of the testimonies from the families, you know, uh, and then we've got the DFA constantly response who are the, I suppose, the professionals in terms of road safety. We must, I suppose, it's our obligation to, to take note of what they're saying. This is the A5. We're all aware of the road safety concerns on that route. We're all, everybody in this chamber is a uh, vocal in terms of a uh, of safety on the A5. So we have no alternative other than to go with uh, to go with a uh, recommendation from the plan official. But I do want to state that uh, I understand completely what the applicant is trying to do, and I'm supportive of it. However, we just don't have the means to to go all the race. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, just probably a comment from the chair. Uh, Notwithstanding the input from uh, Turlock uh, Curley, I think um, our statutory consultees are the uh, go-to experts on transportation and transportation movement. For the applicant to actually go contrary to that recommendation, it would have been more advisable for, probably for them to employ their own traffic consultant, notwithstanding that they have a planning agent there, to try and confront directly uh, like for like, uh, to actually put a, up a case, because essentially what we've got is um, anecdotal uh, planning reasons, you know, and planning um, considerations as to why uh, we should go against the recommendation from our statutory consultee. It's just a note for the future, basically. So I have um, a proposal uh, to go with the officer's recommendation, no contrary. Um, recommendation. Are we all agreed? If not, could you indicate? Bernard, could you indicate whether you agree or disagree? Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I agree. Okay. But is it unanimous or do we have any abstentions? Abstain. Right. One abstention, the rest are all in favour of the proposal to refuse. Uh, Seamus, could you sum up, please? Yeah, okay, members, so application number four, LA 10, 2023-2108, the retention of access pillars, walls, gates, of extensive curtilage of dwelling at 55 Perro Berra. Um, the recommendation was to refuse plan information for the reasons within the report and subject to two reasons. Members have agreed with this recommendation and plan information is refused. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Seamus. Move, move on now to application number five, and that's LA10. Oh, Councillor McGuire, sorry, yes. Court break, Chair, please. If you're proposing it, uh, I'll need a second there then. Um, I've got a choice. I'm going to go with the, the better looking one, Councillor McCann. That's okay. All agreed? Uh, just come back in about 10 minutes, please. About five past, five past four, thank you.
You must have heard, Councillor Feely, you either have extrasensory perception or you knew you were late and you should scuttle in. Right, so he's in the chamber now. Could we switch the recording back on, please? Great. Okay, we'll continue on with our next application, application number five, LA 10 bar 2023 bar 1877, erection of agricultural store and cattle crush. Seamus. Okay, members, so uh, application number five, LA 10 2023 1877F is for the erection of an agricultural store and cattle crush at approximately 75 metres southeast of number 24 Fahar Road in Eskillen. The applicant is the Jay Bonner. Uh, and the recommendation is to refuse planning permission. So on the first, well, sorry, I have to go back. We have two letters of uh, support received, um, and I'm going to just do a summary of those. Um, the first one is from Councillor Mark Ovens. hope I'm pronouncing that correct. Um, summary of the points made are um, this building proposed is of a modest scale and proportion, modest scale proportion and design. It's required for animal welfare as well as human safety. It's important to place emphasis on health and safety on farms. The veterinary practice places an emphasis on segregation of pedigree and commercial cattle herds, which is the purpose of this shed. Uh, the councillor wants it known that he disagrees with the notion that existing buildings could be reused or modified, as many of them are too small, while others are business critical and required for the needs of the farm. Councillor Ovens believes sufficient circumstances exist to allow the committee to approve this proposal. The second uh, letter is from Councillor John Feely, um, and I'll summarise those points. Um, Councillor Feely uh, sa states that the proposal is cited beside existing farm buildings. Nowhere does it state that buildings must belong to the farm. The building is necessary for the efficient use of the business as identified for the reasons identified. Space on farms is always at a premium and all existing buildings are in use. Free space is always needed to house sick animals and for other emergencies. And Councillor Feely believes sufficient evidence exists to allow members to approve the shed and crush. So we'll move on then to the specifics of the application. So we have here on this slide the application site identified in red um, as a regular shape as part of the southern portion of the site is for access purposes. You can see to the north uh, the blue land representing the farm land, the remainder of the farmland, and the buildings further to the north. That's the application site on a better scale showing the building and the access lane, as I mentioned. The shed, or the proposal itself, is a fairly small shed, a typical agricultural scale and design. That's an aerial image of the site uh, along the road. and. To the immediate north, there's an existing agricultural building, but it is not within the ownership of the applicant. Uh, and that's that indicated and shown again. And you can see to the north, the farm group annotated, uh, accessed by an existing laneway. This is the farm map uh, showing the land that uh, forms part of the farm business. So the application site is an isolated field along the road, identified by the number 25. The remainder of the land then is down the laneway, which serves the dwelling and farmyard. This is a submission uh, received from the agent uh, in an effort to demonstrate all the buildings at the main farm group and their use. Um, so you can see there's a variety of uses there, such a workshop, there's a dwelling, tools, machinery, sheep, more machinery and tools, sheep or a cob house, a boat shed, sticks, um, cattle, hay, sheep and a machinery shed. Um, domestic garage. So I'll just summarize then. For the reasons listed within the report and in line with the wording of the transitional arrangements in the 2015 LDP regulations, when reading both the DDP and the plan strategy together, the proposal does not accord with the LDP for the reasons stated, and there are no other material considerations to indicate that it should be approved contrary to the LDP. It is recommended the application is refused for the following reasons. The proposal is contrary to policy SP01, policy DE03, and policy AB06, agricultural development, criteria D, 
as the proposal is not cited beside the existing farm buildings and it has not been demonstrated that there are verifiable site-specific health and safety reasons or future expansion plans that demonstrate the alternative site away from the existing buildings to be acceptable as an exception to the policy. The second reason the proposal is contrary to SP01, DEO3 and AB06 again, in this instance criteria B, as it has not been demonstrated that the building is necessary for the efficient use of the business. And the third reason being that it's contrary to SP01, DEO3 and again AB06, as there are suitable existing buildings on the holding that can be used. Now, if we go back to the farm map, you can see the centre of that grouping of, of, of fields on the farm map, that that's the, the location of the farmyard, the dwelling, and the, the variety of buildings shown on the previous uh, slide, or the, the next slide. Um, it's officer's opinion that there, there's opportunity, ample opportunity, to, to either reuse the existing buildings or at least build at the farm group. Um, but for the reasons stated, we believe the current proposal is contrary to policy. Seamus, just before you get you to move on, I think there were two letters of support. Did you read the two of them? I read the two of them, yeah. Yeah, that's okay. Um, I had it right. I think we've got uh, representation, speaking rights from the agent, if you could bring the agenda. Yeah, Robert, Robert's in the chamber. Robert, if you could dress over to speaker number two position, please. I'll go quickly through the procedure. You, you've been here before. Ten minutes to present. No new information. Um, you can stop. In the 10 minutes, no problem at all. If you go over, I'll tell you. And there may or may not be questions. If you've answered all the questions or no questions, I'll just ask you to address back to your chair. Are you good to go? Great. You can start now. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, members. Uh, this application is for an agricultural shed and cattle crush in the countryside and falls into the Local Development Plan 2030, Agriculture and Forestry Development. The site for the agriculture building is on an outlying piece of land away from the main group of farm buildings. The applicant and his father, Philip, breed both cattle and sheep and have farm business ID 605738 and herd number 452467. Both of these have been active for more than six years and confirmed by DERA. Provided a letter from Lakeland Veterinary Services stating that the spread of infectious diseases between animals in different herds poses a serious threat not only to the health status of individual herds, but also to the health status of the Northern Ireland cattle population in general. They also provide that, they also advise that close contact between animals in different herds should be avoided, and animals housed in the same yard pose a particular high risk due to airborne spread of diseases. They also advise that for vets to carry out certain procedures, farmers need to provide proper facilities, which this building would provide in a safe and isolated location on the farm. We have shown on a map that there are no suitable existing buildings which could be converted. They are all being used for agriculture or domestic purposes. Case officer states in their report that it is inconceivable that some of these buildings could not be converted to provide a separate pedigree cattle shed. The applicant has 25 head of cattle and 50 sheep at present, and we have already identified that all buildings are being used so how can planning say that this is inconceivable that an existing building could not be could be converted? In line with the local development plan, the proposed building is in modest in size and to be constructed using traditional materials and design. The site is also located outside of the special countryside area and near to other existing agricultural sheds, albeit owned by a different farmer. The proposed agriculture building is located 70 metres southeast of a roadside dwelling and there are several other dwellings and buildings nearby. The proposed building will add to the built form, but given the dispersed character of the area, it will not result in a build-up of development or cause a detrimental change to the rural character of the area. This has all been confirmed by the case offer officer in their report. The policy states that the building should be beside existing farm buildings, which may imply that the farm's existing farm buildings but does not specify this, 
and so therefore the siting of this proposed building can comply with policy. The site is isolated from the main farm buildings and therefore provides a suitable degree of separation for the different herds to be kept apart when required. There's no underground holding tank and therefore no adverse environmental effects to any neighbouring properties. The existing mature trees or hedging along the roadside boundary along with the existing neighbouring farm buildings ensure that the proposed building will be well screened from any vantage point and will integrate into the countryside satisfactorily. Access is via an existing entrance and adequate sight lines can be achieved in both directions. In conclusion, we feel the proposed development for a modest sized cattle shed and cattle crush on an outlying piece of ground away from existing farm buildings provides a solution to the isolation of animals problems without affecting the character of the countryside and environmental issues of the neighbours. Thank you. So do you finish, Robert? Yes, we finish. Yeah, that's fine. Succinct and to the point. Thank you very much indeed. Members, any questions for Robert? Councillor Feely, and for me. Go ahead. Uh, thanks, Chair, and thanks, Robert, for that presentation. And um, I don't know whether you'd be fantastic. Uh, sorry, answer these questions, and maybe you should be asking to, to the uh, applicant. But I was just reading through the notes there, and he says he is he keeps a few pedigree cattle as well. So I was just, and I, and I in fact, I come from a farming background myself, so I can understand the the way you know, you'd, you'd be better keep them separated from the from the commercial herd, you know, with the TB and brucellosis and the mad cow and the only diseases, a lot of diseases. I know them them pedigree cattle be very. Very expensive. I kind of know the, the rationale went round looking for to get the shed se separated. So, is 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 that right? He has pedigree cattle, and and I say it's to be biosecure. It's one of the main reasons he wants the sheds away from the other sheds. It kind of makes sense. But I know there's a, another few wee problems there. But is um, and I see where uh, um, the officer was coming about about using some of them other sheds. But I know myself, no matter how many sheds you'd have, they'd, be, they'd all be filled with stuff in the end, you'd be always using them. So that's my main question, is it, is it pedigree cattle has, and does he want to keep them for testing, or, or if one of them can have any cattle to get out there? Thank you. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, uh, thank you, Councillor Peter. Yes, uh, he does have low, uh, the number of uh, many pedigree cattle he keeps, I don't know, but he does have some, yes. Yeah. Okay, Councillor McCann, Stephen, next. Thank you, Chair. And so long as some other being as Councillor Feely, and thanks for your, your presentation, Robert. I'm not coming from a background, so f forgive me for not knowing Hello. all the all the detail of it. But I would just like to hear a bit about, about his form and enterprise, what cattle he keeps, and why the why the requirement for a shed so far away from the farm buildings. Uh, obviously there's a reason for it, but I just want to hear here again maybe the rationale for it, uh, Robert. Uh, Councillor McCann, um, the reason he, ha he has pedigree cattle and he wants to keep them separate and isolated, and this is a, an isolated piece of ground which is outlined away from all the farm, and so therefore it would have no, uh, the, keeping the cattle there would keep them completely in isolation for um, away from all the other animals. So, okay, Stephen. Thank you. No, yeah, just, yeah. just one follow-up. Sorry. Okay, thank you. So these cattle, these pedigree cattle, will never at any stage interact or mix with the with the commercial cattle. Is that correct? They'll never. Or I'm aware. No, they won't. No. Okay. Okay. Right. Any further questions? Don't see any further questions, Robert. You can go back to your seat. Yeah. Thank you. Seamus, could you sum up, please? I suppose, um, in terms of the, the you know, mention made to the, the term inconceivable, I suppose this choice of words was used given the extensive range of buildings currently existing at the, the farm holding. Um, the numbers of cattle and sheep alluded to, uh, it is it is hard to see that there's not scope at this existing group of buildings for either a reuse or a shed to say beside it and um, with modern methods and, and technologies uh, to isolate and to segregate herds within the one yard or certainly within separate buildings 
is something that could be managed and, and uh, could happen. Um, uh, I suppose just perhaps to lead on something that Councillor McCann asked, um, the, the sighting of the, the shed is somewhat uh, strange in that it's on one isolated portion of land. Uh, one would have to assume that the, the, these animals will be grazed together and for the most part of the year, the grazing season from spring to autumn, be in proximity to one another. So it's it's difficult to see how this proposal uh, in isolation uh, set on its own will comply with policy and indeed contribute to the aims of sustainable development by clustering. Um, it does sit beside uh, a third party farm building, but again, to use the same uh, rationale, there would be potential there for cross contamination among uh, separate herds, which would be a bigger issue. So it's it's difficult to see how this uh, off-site location provides a solution. Thanks very much, Seamus. Any questions for Seamus? Councillor McGuire, tell me. Thank you, Mark. And currently, just a question. I think it was Councillor Feely raised it in his submission there. Uh, the, the, is it fair to say that uh, field number 25 there, if, if the building was on there, would it be fair to say that it does cluster with the the shed behind it and the dwelling, there, there's about three or four dwellings and stuff there. But if this application was in relation to that, would we be calculating that as a cluster? Okay. Or is it in the policy that it must cluster within the ownership of the farm? Uh, I suppose as, in, as we have uh, indicated, our officers have indicated in the report, while the building is sited beside another existing farm building, but this building is not in the control of the applicant. It's a third party building. The policy wording requires that the proposal in inverted commas, the proposal is cited beside the existing farm buildings. The inclusion of the word, the words, the existing farm buildings is taken as reference to existing farm buildings on the holding and not third party buildings. So I suppose it's, it's not a play on words, but at the same time, it says the existing farm buildings. Are you perplexed, Councillor? Uh, well, uh, well, similar to Councillor McCann, I'm not from a, a rural background, but uh, uh, it, it could be a slight anomaly in our policy in that uh, just their farm buildings, but yet, as, as I, I did ask, and, and maybe Seamus didn't answer, obviously, for obvious reasons, uh, if this application was in relation to the dwelling that backs onto number 25 there, would it be sufficiently close and within proximity of those buildings for us to say it clusters with those buildings? That's the point. And then again, as I say, we're back to the anomaly within the policy that says that farm buildings. But uh, just, it's an interesting point. Yes, and Paul maybe wants to come in here, but it's it's an interesting point, Councillor, yes, but what we have is one building. And it's, it's not a group of buildings. Yep. Paul? Or that council really? Yeah, thanks, Chair. I suppose just to answer your question directly, Councillor McGuire, I think <coughs> if this farm building um, was related to the, the adjacent house, if that was the farm and the enterprise, then yes, it would. I think we would be saying that it would cluster. But the requirement in the policy is obviously to cluster with your own farm buildings, um, not to cluster with other people's buildings. So, I. Uh, it's always been that case, um, and uh, I suppose I, I wouldn't see any inconsistency or ambiguity in it now, but um, it, it's always been that case that the requirement would be to site beside your own farm buildings. And then as you sort of look at the sequential test, then, you know, it looks if you come away from your own farm group, then you're under the exception. So by and implicitly within the policy that supports, you need to site beside your own existing farm buildings. Thanks, Chair. Okay, Councillor Riley, Tom. Thanks, Chair. I just um, running the scenario, I suppose, Jim is here, that uh, this man is keeping pedigree cattle, so he wants to have a biosecure sort of uh, set up there. Okay, you're interpreting that he may graze them together, he may not. He may run them completely as a separate unit and running them uh, in the 
and not having cross contamination at all, even for having them in the crush or, or putting them into the shed for whatever reason, if it's winter and over winter or whatever, you know. So it is conceivable here that this is a, a standalone biosecurity uh, application that is that is being pushed in front of us here. It's fair to say that as well, as your interpretation of it. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I wanted to, I, I wanted to establish that, that it was there. And then can I ask, how come that field 25, that field 25 is in ownership? Um, the, the farm maps do not convey ownership. Um, what the farm map will convey is that it forms part of the farm business at the time it was printed. So mm. um, it was being farmed with that farm. Um, we can't. We, we assume that it's within the applicant's ownership if he's intended to build on it, but um, yeah, it's it's juxtaposition in terms of the rest of the farm is somewhat different, but that would... And do, Chair, do we know, or Shimis, do we know if any of the uh, intervening land there is, is taken or anything like? We have no evidence on the intervening land. Uh, the fact that it's not on the farm map is taken to and fair that it's not being farmed by the applicant. Can I just confirm, Chair, that the uh, fields of land outlined in yellow normally uh, indicate that they are uh, with legal sort of title to who uh, the farm applicant or the, the farm herd or the person with the herd number. That's generally we are taking just for general sort of understanding that we are taking the point that anything shown as within the control or the thing, are we differentiating between ownership and land taken? I didn't understand ever that we differentiated. Do you want Philip to comment on that? Well, whether Philip would know whether we are. Well, that's, I'm not saying that's, Philip, but whether no, that's, that's what we are doing. Philip. That's what you're, Philip can Hopefully, he, he might have an indication. Yeah. I wouldn't yeah. just I'm put sure him on the spot and say he knows. Do, but... Right, Philip. Oh, you go. Well, Paul will go first. Chair, I'll go first, but I think Jim will probably know the answer to this better than me. Yeah, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a farmer either. Um, but my understanding of the farm maps is it doesn't convey an ownership. So you, you could. You may own some of the fields, you may lease some of the fields. What it can phase is what your business farms, the fields that your business, your business reference number farms. They may be owned or they may be leased. They may be, you know, or, or all leased, but it, it doesn't necessarily guarantee ownership. Okay. That's correct. Right. Philip. With the one caveat, of course, be to that being that lease, leasing is a type of ownership, um, just to confuse matters slightly <laughs> further. Um, so, um, you know, I mean, for example, lands could be taken in Con Acre or something like yes. that as well. But, Chair, can I ju just prosecute this a little bit more in that uh, if it's then taken in Con Acre or at least whatever way you want to term that, it doesn't give you an automatic right to build on it, then it has to be an agreement between you and the leasee to actually build on. So. Surely we should have a differentiation colour scheme uh, of what you own, so we know that there's no, if we grant or don't grant plan of permission, we know you own that and there is no ambiguity of whether you have to get a third party agreement to, uh, uh, if we give plan of permission. I appreciate that's a, a third party issue. Paul, Paul would comment here before Philip. Yes, yeah, so one. Uh, thanks, Chair. Uh, on, on the application form, then there'll be a, a certificate of ownership. So the applicant will fill in one of four different types. Um, so if there's anyone with an, uh, an interest in the lands in red, you know, say if, if you don't own a portion of the site or all of the site, then you need to serve notice when you submit the application on, on whoever has an estate or an interest in the land. But it's just to be clear, ownership, there's no requirement in the policy to own. The requirement is that it must be on the farm business. Thanks, Chair. Okay. Thanks, Great. Chair. I'm going to bring Councillor McGrown. He's been waiting patiently for bring Councillor Rainey in. And Councillor McClockery, could you clarify one that you're here at the start of the meeting and two? Could you put your screen on, please? Um, 
from what I can see, Chair, my screen's on. I come in halfway through item number four. Right, so you, you're here for all of it. That's clarified. It's just, yeah, I can yeah. see you now. Is my That's, camera not working at the, in the chamber? It's, it's not that, no. There, because I'm looking at um, the screen, the screen bar actually wasn't showing you, so I'm just clarifying you. I have to uh, zip you along. Um, that's okay. So you can take your hand. Lovely. Down Thank again. you, Chair. What? Uh, I wanted no, to speak on no, this, no, Chair. Okay. in before you. If you want to ask a question, keep your hand up. Councillor yeah, McGrath that's okay. In. Councillor McGrath. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I just have a, a question, two questions. Um, is there any objections from the from the other person that owns the farm buildings? And I think it was a father and son. Has, has the father and son both got herd numbers of their own? And um, you know, <clears throat> I've been through some similar, you know, where the where the department have uh, have you know because of biosecurity and, be, and because of of the pedigree of the cattle and all they do, you know, for for Cavan or if, if there is veterinary issues, you know, that you know having a place like this would be ideal, you know. But um, you know, it's just. To me, it's just a wee bit too far away from the farm, you know. But um, but I can understand where they're coming from, you know. But you know, I just want to know: would, do the father and son both have the same business ID, or have they got two separate herd numbers? Thank you, Chair. It's okay. Thank you. Take your, your hand down, Bernard. Thank you, Seamus. Uh, to, to answer the first question, there's been no representations received on the application, and no objections. In terms of the the ownership or the, the specifics of the farm businesses. Um, we have information to demonstrate that the farm business is currently active and established. Um, we don't know anything further in that regard in terms of uh, if there's one or two separate businesses or if they farm together. Uh, that hasn't been demonstrated. So taking it, uh, one business ID number was submitted for the purpose of this application and was found to be both active and established. Okay, thank you for that. Councillor Rainey, waiting patiently, Alan. Well, Chairman, uh, this is just a, a comment as a, a has been active farmer. There's two points here. The first thing is the, uh, the pedigree uh, section of it. If this is someone who has pedigree animals, and most likely, and I don't know that for I don't know that for sure. If it's pedigree animals, and he's taken these to shows, he needs to have a an isolation area when he brings them home before that he can uh, show them again to take them back to another show. So it's very important uh, that he does have this isolation. Area. And as for the handling uh, end of it, I'm looking at I'm looking at my map here, and I'm looking at the a cluster of buildings. There's none of them in my mind, none of them at all suitable for uh, conversions. Yes, they're all useful in their own right, in my opinion. But for today's standards, for cattle handling, and mind you, the, the vets uh, play a big part in this as well. And if you have young ladies coming to uh, handle cattle and all, they do expect the latest, uh, the, the, the latest uh, safety precaution uh, that can, and I would support them in that. Whenever I was farming, I felt that I had you know, what was upmarket facilities. But whenever the boys took over, the facilities that I had were virtually rubbish. They, 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 they didn't, they didn't uh, fix me by demolishing them. They're still there, but they're growing over with algae. And uh, it demonstrates to me the necessity with lighting and all the rest of it for reading mechanisms like you have a proper handling facility. And uh, that's my comment on this here, 
for a past experience. I think that this this is most deserving. Thank you very much, uh, Alan. Councillor McCockery, you can come in now. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, again, I was going to come in on a similar vein to Councillor Rainey, and and not if they if they're taking pedig pedigree livestock to shows then they require an isolation period when they come back onto the farm as they've been in contact with animals from a wide range of areas uh, and, and they need to be isolated. Uh, obviously, that's beside the road. It's, it's, it's an ideal spot for to do that. It's detached away from their farmyard so they can say they have no problems with isolation. My question to the planners would be, and, and this is maybe a bit facetious, if the neighbour had applied for planning permission, would be in, in this position now. James? Well, I, I suppose, Councillor, that's uh, part of the issue here. Um, there's no real dispute uh, as to the need or not for this isolation facility. Um, and we're not in a, in, a, in a place of arguing what particular farmers need or don't need for the efficient function of their holding. Um, what the, the main concern here is that there's, well, there's a variety of concerns here, but in terms of the location, uh, the concern is that this is not sited beside the existing farm buildings. Now, this could be achieved at the farm holding with a certain degree of separation um, that would allow for uh, isolation and safe working practices and everything else that's, that's uh, deemed necessary. But it's the isolation, pardon the, the repeating term, it's the isolation of this from the farm block, from the farm holding, from the farm buildings that is the main concern here. Probably enough, John. Yeah, I mean, it's a difficult one. Yeah, thank you. That's okay. Paul, back in again. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. for extra time. Sorry. Um, look, members, I, I think just to be very clear, um, I know we're, we're, we're sort of working on hypotheticals to an extent of what what a neighbour may do or what an ore farmer may do. We have no proposal in front of us. We can't even second guess whether that application would be acceptable or not. It's not material to this application and it's sort of urge to stick to the specifics of the case. Thanks, Chair. Thank you very much. Any further questions or queries to be put to Seamus? I don't see any indication. Then we need to come to the decision members. Councillor Feely, if you, yep, bring down, thank you, Anthony. Yeah, uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, I'll just make, can I make one comment before I make a proposal, Robert? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going back on, on when Thomas brought this up earlier on about having the cattle separated during the winter time and, and, and maybe not during the grazing period, but as I, I farm myself and you'd have no problem having them separated there. In the grazing period, you could have cattle in field number 12, and you could have another cattle in number, field number three, and electric fences up and so forth, and, and that could be achieved that way. And I know it's unusual having this field away from the rest of the land, but it's not really that unusual in some places, even down around where I come in Garris, a lot of farms, as small fields away from their own land. It was years ago. That could be all clay ground, and there could have been a field of, of moss ground away, away in, in another place, and, and they were given fields to do cropping, put potatoes in and stuff like that there. And you could have a square of bog away from your own land for terribly rights to cut turf and, and that. So it's not that really unused in some rural parts of Fermanagh. So I was just going to, well, wanted to make them two points. Um, and I know when I'm, I was just going to go against the officer's recommendations and I know I have to, I have to give a valid reason. So I'm going to try and maybe Robin was not good enough. Good, you're listening. Thank you great. let me, you let no me know. Yeah, well, I'm going to go to, to number two first, if it's all right, Robert. Uh, That's okay. It has not been demonstrated the building is necessary for the efficient use of the, of the business. Well, well, I, I think it is in this man's business, farm business. He does need this away from from the rest of his sheds for his um for his pedigree cattle to keep them safe. For I know, and I know myself and Alan has, has mentioned there too. And if he's maybe if he's not shown, he could be rent bull calves, and the price of them could be five or six thousand piece each for one for one animal so it's very important to keep them safe and they don't pick up tb or any other disease from from this commercial herd so 
I think that that does demonstrate a need for uh, honest business for that. So that's number two. And number three, suitable building exists on the whole land that could be used, but I don't really think them other buildings could be used because, uh, as we call them now, now the, the wee calf sheds and duck pools and wee turf houses and stuff like that. There, no way could you keep good commercial cattle in them sheds. So I think that that does with uh, number three. And the proposal is not say beside an existing farm buildings. Well, it is beside farm buildings, but whether there's a wee bit of a grey area whether or not it is own farm building. So I think that is number one. So I be um, proposed we go against the officer's application and um, and, and give plan permission for the shed. Thank you. Have you addressed one? Yeah, well, I said it's, well, it's, I know. I think you fully addressed. I think it was just had a side discussion here, two and three, and yeah. part of your discussion, I think, for two and three yes. are enough reasons contained to actually make uh, one fall as well. Yeah, okay. That's okay. So, thank you, Chair. Councillor McCann, Stephen, are you thank going you. to bolster up what he was saying? Then? Yeah, yeah, I'm yep. just going to come in and second Councillor no, Stephen's okay. yep. proposal, and uh, I'll just outline my rationale for, for seconding this application. Chairman, uh, I accept the testimony from, from Robert, uh, the agent, uh, who's outlined the need for a biosecure unit disposed to keep his pedigree cattle or the applicant's pedigree cattle separate from the from the commercial herd the her herd and uh, the only way to do that is a separate is a separate foreign building uh, i think that reason would counteract items one and two chair in my interpretation possibly and then item three is that the uh, the applicant the agent has proposed or provided uh, a diagram showing the current utilization of the sheds and the farm holding which doesn't allow for this particular unit to keep pedigree cattle safe. So uh, I'm happy to second Councillor Feely. With That's OK. Right. And just before I get the two of you away, any further proposals? Right. Um, because we're going against um, rec uh, conditions have to be um, proposed by Seamus, if this is agreed by the committee, are you happy to run with the proposals that Seamus will go, Anthony? And Right, so that's that crew. Right, I've got a proposal um, proposed by Councillor Freely, seconded by Councillor McCann, that we go against the officer's recommendation, and the proposal is to approve. And sufficient reasons, I believe, have been provided both by the proposer and seconder to counter the arguments for refusal. Um, Seamus, do you want to say anything before? Let's just sum up this. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I haven't put it. I haven't put it. Okay, the, no, no. If you have any comments to make before I put it to the committee, nothing further. Right. I'm putting that to the committee. Are we all agreed? Any against? Could the two on WebEx please put up um, a yellow hand to say you agree, or just leave it down if you disagree? I've got. Yeah, both hands up. That's unanimous. Thank you very much indeed, Seamus. Could you sum up then, yeah. please? Okay, members, so uh, application number five, uh, planning reference LA 10 2023 1877 for the erection of an agricultural store and cattle crush at number 24 Faulkner Road in Eskillen. Uh, recommendation was to refuse planning permission. Members have went contrary to this recommendation and have decided to grant planning permission. And at this stage, officers ask that permission to attach conditions be delegated by. Great. Thank you very much indeed, James. That concludes the applications for decision. We will now go on to, um, to item five on the agenda, and that is to note the schedule of planning decisions issued in December 2023. Have we any questions either for Seamus or Paul? Uh, Councillor Thompson? No questions, Thank Chair. Just proposed to note. That's Thank okay. You. Proposed to note. Thank you, Earl. Do I have a seconder? Councillor McCann, Stephen, that's okay. That's great. All agreed? Yes, I see that. Item six, and that's the note report of planning appeal decisions um, in December 2023. Do we need a comment on that or any questions in regard to it's an application that was withdrawn? So, if you know questions, Councillor McCann proposing and Councillor Robinson uh, seconding the noting. All agreed? Agreed, thank you. Item seven, um, to note report on planning committee actions from July uh, 2023 to November 2023. You will note that all actions so noted have been actions. Any questions proposed? Councillor Robinson seconded. Councillor Thompson, all agreed? Yep, agreed, thank you. We want to item eight, um, and that's to note update report on planning uh, enforcement. Any questions? 
No questions. Can I propose and second to the note? Councillor Rainey, are you proposing? I say well done. Councillor Robinson, seconding. Thanks. All agreed? All agreed. Thank you. Um, item nine, consider quarterly updates on live planning caseload report quarter two. Any questions? No. Proposed Councillor Robinson, seconded Councillor McGuire to note all agreed. Agreed, thank you. Item 10, to consider a report on planning performance, a statistical report for second quarter. I think Paul just wants a brief comment on this. Um, you'll note we are doing well, Paul. Yeah, thanks, Chair. And uh, members, just maybe just in my. Uh, a few comments to say you know, some of the good work that we've been doing in the committee um, in terms of the members and also Darren and Navina and all the teams, uh, Seamus and, and everyone that's involved working hard. So we've actually met the majors and the local targets. Um, so so fairly positive. Uh, and we're only one of a few councils that's doing that. So uh, it sort of shows that the good work that we're doing in terms of uh, the improvement program and, and all the interventions uh, and they're working. So thanks, Chair. Thank you. Proposer to Councillor McCann, Stephen, go ahead. Yeah, happy proposed, Chair. I'm sure these figures are just purely coincidental that the coincide never I come onto the committee, but happy yeah. proposed, Chair. Um, I, I think we'll get to the stage, Councillor McCann, that we won't have a door wide enough to let you through if you keep on in that vein, but well done, proposed. Seconded by Councillor Thompson. All agreed? Agreed. Yep. Um, Item 11, consider a report on the Northern Ireland Affairs Committee on call for evidence. We have attached report to that. We do need a decision on it. Paul, do you want to comment? Yeah, thanks, Chair. Uh, members, I'm sure you've read the details. So the Northern Ireland Affairs Committee, they've launched an inquiry just on the renewable, renewable energy and net zero in Northern Ireland. That was launched just before Christmas. Um, and basically, our, our draft response to that inquiry is set out in Appendix 1. So, uh, the inquiry is going to look at um, the progress a and uh, towards the renewable energy targets and achieving its net zero um, goals. And I suppose where it stands at the minute, um, any potential obstacles, um, and how you're going to address those obstacles. And basically, I think it's important, members, um, that we feed into this uh, consultation. Uh, just to make sure that um, we set out our position in local government that you know, we're doing all we can, we're performing well, we're dealing with these applications efficiently and quickly. You'll see some of the issues that we've set out there in terms of financial um, unsustainability of the planning system and consultees, uh, many of which are outside our own control. So we just feel it's very important um, to convey those matters. Uh, and within the report, you'll also note that um, we've recommended that the committee is available to present the evidence if, if, if required or wanted. Um, so, members, the deadlines close of play uh, tomorrow. Um, so, if, if you are content, I'm happy to take any suggestions, but um, we would need the action action or reply before tomorrow. Thanks, Chair. That's it. So, we're looking for other comments or a proposal to agree with the answers provided so that our staff can actually move forward. Councillor Robinson, are you proposing, Paul? One thing I'd uh, is uh, upgrading the, uh, the lines and that there. The, the line now is full from the Kibaki to Forty Down or Craig Avenue, where that line goes to. It's completely full, max full. You can take no more power in it with the new wind turbines built in Morley there. So that's that line completely filled. And that that's a capacity big. issue, Paul. I think it probably is sitting outside the government. The yeah, right yeah, right. yeah. And that, that's something that will have to be dealt with. I mean, the, the uptake on renewables, I think particularly within our, our district area, is exceedingly good. The actual uh, yeah. capacity of the system is lagging behind. Now, NIE, uh, Power NIE, will have to actually get to work on that, but I don't think that's a reason for sort of... No, no, but, back. Yeah. Bring it up no, but it's, it's noted, we have noted that, and we, we have to do that. No, what I you may see is a lot of the applications will come in, but I think we may, and we've talked about this in the future, we may have applications aligned with um, wind turbine applications for power storage until the circuit, you know, the whole system can actually take the yeah. increase in supply. So. Well, that could be one of the are you happy to propose? 
Yeah, that's okay. Paul, quickly. Yeah, I think just, just to confirm, Councillor Robinson, I think we have referred to that issue within the appendix one, you know, uh, maybe not in as, as significant detail, but we've drawn we've draw the inquiry's intention to it, you know, so, um, but certainly I, I can include a bit more detail. There's no problem. Thanks, Chair. Could I have a second here then? Oh, Councillor McGuire, Tony. I go, Margaret Kelly, just on, on question seven there, just the, 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 the availability of funds to promote this and the fact that the local authorities are not included within the scope. Uh, is, is it a case now with, with Stormont not being in position for a few years that, that that we have had no advancement of this at executive level? And, and again, just to note that it's unfortunate that maybe that if there was an executive again, would there be an opportunity for local authorities to try to download some of this funding to advance some of the policy? It's just a general point. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to come in, Alison? Here. Sorry, chair. No, no. There, there you no, go. thank you. I think, chair, the answer would be potentially, but um, there certainly has been no indications, even prior to the assembly falling, that they would go down a similar route. But it would be something certainly that we would wish to encourage. I think why it's important that we would be making representations to this inquiry is in the context of, or call for evidence rather, the number of applications that we receive. And clearly, our view would be the local government side of this arrangement is actually working very well. Tommy, do you want to say? Thanks. Uh, the reason the reason I pointed out is that obviously, as the local authority, we often get criticised for not progressing these issues. But it needs to be clarified that we don't either have the finances nor the authority to do so. Just thank you. Yep. Right. I've got a proposed and seconder. All agreed. Very. Right, thank you very much. Item twelve is to note update report on the uh, local planning improvement program. Paul. Yeah, thanks, Chair. And just very quickly, members, um, we've undertaken another workshop, as I would sort of say, phase two of the improvement uh, program. Um, and we'll bring papers uh, before members for formal approval just on the detail of that. Um, and you'll, you'll sort of, uh, you'll be aware that we've rolled out some of those practical issues this afternoon at the at the planning committee meeting i think the, the feedback so far has been very positive so in terms of the phase ones um appendix one we've got approval from dfa in terms of scheme of delegation you'll also note the piece of correspondence at the end um they've actually approved their statement of community involvement now so we can roll roll all those uh, phase one initiatives out we had a workshop with our agents last week which was very constructive as well real good attendance i think it was over 30 had attended so um, members, it's just the advice that those phase ones will be rolled out from next week as agreed in the first week of February. So, um, but they'll be set out clearly in the emails. Um, so, uh, just just be careful in the detail. Thanks, Chair. That's okay. Uh, Glenn, do you want an update basically on some of the workshop items? Phone call from someone. Yeah. Okay. That's fair enough. Well, just a brief synopsis of what was discussed and agreed. Yeah, prior to getting papers, but that's okay. Happy enough with that. Yep. Could it, um, proposer and seconder proposed. Councillor Feely seconded. Councillor McGuire all agreed. No. Three items of correspondence, and we do have a bit of confidential business, so don't put anything off. First item is from NAEA. Do you need a comment, or is it just for noting, Paul? Thanks, Chair. It's, it's, it's just really for noting uh, members. Um, you'll sort of be aware of the last couple of committees we've had ver um, various correspondence on the same issue from NAEA. Um, so this now seems to be a settled and agreed position. Um, and then we'll await the, the actual outcome of, of the ammonia, the consultation and the, the ammonia protocol. So um, I suppose just to note the, the levels and the requirements um, that, that there'll be now uh, setting out and, and assessing applications against uh, and we've we've started to get some feedback from NAA in relation to applications so That's thanks good. chair proposed to note please councillor robinson and councillor thompson thank you second piece of information from department for infrastructure thanks chair uh, and members it's just a note um, this is correspondence from dfa in relation to the strategic plan and policy statement and climate change and a focused review of that, and, and we'll bring a, a, a detailed report before the committee in February um, in relation to that. Thanks, Chair. Great, thank you. Pose. 
Councillor Rainey and second Councillor Robinson all agreed. Yes. Last piece of information from Nilga really is just for noting. Yep. Are we happy enough? Councillor Robinson and Councillor Rainey all agreed. Thank you. No other correspondence. Um, and I have received no urgent and relevant business. We do need to have a discussion in committee. So we're going into committee. Councillor Thompson and Councillor McCann. See you no noting your head there. Well done, thank you. Um, can we switch?
got to summarise. I'll agree. Okay, we can summarise now. Thank you, Chair. While in committee, the Council considered an update report on various legal matters and resolved a course of action in relation to each of those, and also noted correspondence dated the 11th of January from the Planning Appeals Commission regarding the local development uh, plan timeline and timetable. Proposal seconder to note, Councillor Robinson, Councillor McCann, all agreed. That's it. Thank you very much indeed. That's the conclusion of the committee. Thank you very much indeed for your diligence, attendance.